So, uh, welcome to Delta Green and the Darkness Spoke, a new operation for Delta Green that we're playtesting today with some old hands from Delta Green. Um, yay. I've killed many people here before. <laughs> Hopefully we'll continue uh, with that. <laughs> and sometimes it's been a proxy kill. It's been my, my operation through another keeper has killed them. Or... So, um, we begin the game uh, June 3, 1986. Um, in New York City. Uh, you guys have all been scrambled to New York. New York, uh, in the midst of dealing with a bunch of um, high-profile uh, corruption-level crimes with the New York City Police Department, including the Parking and, parking and Transit Authority and several other huge scandals, uh, Mayor Koch uh, is dealing with a serial killer uh, in Queens uh, and has activated a task force on the fourth victim uh, for what the New York Post is calling New York's headhunter. Um, this man has killed four times. The latest victim was the 2nd of June. Uh, he seems isolated in an area near JFK Airport. So far, all four victims have been found um, within a mile or two of each other, always in a park area, always near the water. Um, the latest victim, the reason uh, the group has become interested, uh, the latest victim apparently carved... Uh, Akkadian cuneiform characters into his own chest. Um, now, the, the oddity there is they, they initially thought it was part of the attack. Uh, he is missing his head, indeed. Um, but no, uh, apparently these happened before he died uh, and were done with his own hand. Uh, so you guys have flown into JFK uh, you're from the Behavioral Sciences Unit at the FBI. Uh, the group has uh, basically slotted you in for another group. Uh, and you guys all have a background in this anyway. You are being sent here to assess whether or not there's actually something unnatural going on, it, or if this is just an occult-inspired serial killer, um, not unlike Son of Sam or uh, any of the others who would quote the Bible or... Uh, demonology so um june 3rd 1986 is a really really freaking hot day uh as you guys exit the delta terminal at jfk airport so we can start there okay so have we worked together before this group yes We're the same unit okay so yep. do you want to go around and do the <laughs> brief introductions of the characters what you look like what you sound like that sure. kind of thing what what people know um, so I'm playing Agent uh, Jim Killian. He's uh, 38. He's been a, an FBI agent for, um, I don't know, five or six years now. But before that, he was an academic. He taught classics at St. John's in Maryland. He had a degree in, in classics from uh, uh, Columbia. But he comes from a Navy family, and so he sort of felt the pull of the family legacy of public service after his, his favorite grandfather an old navy man passed away so he's 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 been he's been interested in historical issues and occult issues and how they relate to violence and psychopathology and that's what brought him into into this unit he's a skinny guy about i don't know average height sort of reddish hair and freckled okay um how about um john next Okay, uh, I'm playing David Green. He's um, he's a Vietnam vet who, after the war, after he got out, uh, went to school, got a degree in criminology, became a cop. But he was dealing with a lot of uh, PTSD issues, and um, uh, his marriage broke up, and he was having issues at work, and so he uh, decided to go for the FBI, and his superiors were like, yes, go away, join the FBI and leave us. So they covered up his issues at work, in his application. So he managed to get in. So he's been an agent for about five or six years. Um, uh, his interest in this, he's bright. He's a bright guy. He's a big guy, though. Um, guy. Well, that's because he has a gunshot wound. Yeah. So he was shot uh, during, a, during an FBI operation. Uh, so as Shane said, I think he's probably having to skate the line on, on passing physical stuff now. Okay. But, um, but he's, I think, bright enough uh, and has insight into uh, psychology issues because of his own issues. 
Okay. So that's why he's in this unit. Cool. Uh, and Amber? Um, I'm playing Lorraine uh, Tiganello, Tig, to her friends. Um, she's a 34-year-old African-American forensic pathologist. Uh, her parents were killed in a car accident when she was seven. She was raised by her grandmother. Um, it sort of sparked this uh, lifelong interest in the macabre death and dying, which hence led to her going into pathology, forensic pathology. Um, and, you know, she's, she's kind of tough, kind of, you know, had to fight her way to get to where she is now. Um, and, she, yeah, she has seen some crazy things over the past couple of years uh, as far as, you know, investigating, um, you know, these uh, a case or two. So, you know, now she's here where she is and looking forward to her next adventure. Okay. And Kevin? All right. I'm James Alton, who is an FBI psychologist. He used to be firmly of the materialist school, believing that uh, every psychological behavior um, had a, a chemical or electro-neuro uh, explanation. Um, but while on a case dealing with a particularly un come to the conclusion that there is a lot more going on to what creates criminals, murderers, and especially serial killers, and is um, very, very, very determined to find out what the real explanation is, um, which has a lot to do with um, non-material things. And as a result, um, he is not well-liked within the FBI. Most other agents keep him at arm's length, if at all possible, um, because he's, he's not quite twitchy, but he definitely has a very intense, watery gaze that just stares at people, sizing them up. Okay, sounds good. Um, so, uh, you guys, uh, you, know, you collect your, your gear, and um, you, you spot the Grand Fury immediately. I mean, it, it's the obvious unmarked cop car uh, as uh, two... Uh, New York City detectives hop out. One is terribly overweight. The other is uh, slouchy and thin. Uh, they're wearing their badges on their belts. Their jackets are in the car. Their sleeves are rolled up. It's got to be at least you know 85 uh, degrees out. Uh, and they they recognize your group immediately and come kind of trotting across. Uh, and what one introduces himself as Detective Salaski and uh, shakes hands. And the tall, slouchy dude uh, says his name is Anderson and begins helping you with your uh, your luggage uh, to the Grand Fury. And um, this is uh, it's going to suck, but someone's got to ride up front. Why does it suck? Uh, it's, you, you never sat in a car with Anderson before. <laughs> and Anderson's like, fuck you. So they, they're loading their stuff in. They don't even ask your names. They just shake hands. Mm -hmm. And uh, Salaski, finally, when you know, basically you're at the car, there's loading and unloading, people swearing at each other. Uh, Salaski says, we're going to go over to the site. They're still working forensics on the site at the park where they just found the last victim. I figure you guys, you know, uh, the commander said, take you anywhere you want. I can take you to a hotel. I can take you over to the site. It's up to you. Uh, I think they have a car for you. I'm not sure, but uh, you you just let us know what you want to do. It was Solaski, and what was the other name? Anderson. Right. Well, we'll jump right into it. Yeah, I mean, if if we have a car available, we need to get our car first, so we can so we can have some mobility, right? Okay, so he says it's it's going to be a bit of a jaunt. We got to go to Jamaica and get the car, but it shouldn't it shouldn't be a big deal. Um. And you guys know where you're staying? Do we? How, how much prep did we? How much prep went on in this assignment? And not very much at all. Uh, the the other team that was prepared to go was basically pulled off at the last second. You were thrown okay. onto it. So yeah, we'll tell them. Uh, uh, no idea. This this came up. This came up like ten minutes ago. So okay, us... we'll go get your car, and you guys can take care of it. And uh, did you bring the beepers? He says to Anderson, and Anderson's like, I thought you were going to bring the beepers. So they're arguing now. 
uh, as they pull out and you guys drive, uh, you know, it's, it's less than 15 minutes to Jamaica. Um, some of you have been to New York before. Jamaica is this really centrally located, extremely urban area. Queens, trains run through it. Um, they drive you to a depot. There's another Grand Fury. Um, there's dozens of police cars in various states of disrepair. You assume this is some sort of central uh, motor pool kind of area for the NYPD on um, in Queens and Brooklyn. Uh, who's going to sign for it is also ask he really cares about. I'll do it. Uh, okay. So he, he hands you the, uh, the clipboard. Uh, his beeper goes off. Um, Anderson disappears for 15 minutes. You can see him talking on a pay phone. Uh, finally, they both come back and they give you the whole, like, we did our part, right? Like, there, there. Did he get us to the site? Well, uh, he, he says, uh, well, uh, Anderson's getting the beepers. Uh, you can ring the commander or we can, you can follow us out there. Whatever you want. Oh, I we'll mean, follow. we'll follow you out there. The body's already been moved. So it's, it's mostly they're looking for stuff on the ground. Where, where are the bodies? Yeah. They all, are the bodies yeah. all in the same place? These victims we've got on our... Yeah, they're, they're at the, they're at the, um, uh, uh, Nassau County Medical Center, uh -huh. which is uh, has the largest morgue facilities on Long Island. Right. Um, they're trying they're trying to keep them all together. Uh, none of them have been released for burial um, for specific reasons uh, that they'll get into later. Um, and they are all a lot of these people have um, drug problems. A lot of the victims, um, so there's not a lot of people asking for those bodies. Let's just put it that way. How, how, and when was the first killing? Sorry, what was that? When was the first killing? So if you go to the bottom of the map, uh, you'll see the four victims, and they're listed by date. Gotcha. So uh, March 16th, 86 was the first. Yeah. Uh, then uh, uh, April, uh, then March 30th, then April 29th, then June 2nd. Um, Besides the drug issues, did they have anything in common? Were they homeless or anything like that, or did they just have to? Uh, I mean, their their status varies. Uh, the only thing in common, three of the victims are white, and one is a Hispanic female. Um, so, which of the, which of the you know? I, oh, there it is. HF. Okay. Yeah, Hispanic okay. female. Um, Jacqueline Hall, Brian Reeves, Karen Vincent, Irving Fisher. Um, they're all found in, in marsh areas or uh, areas adjacent to waterways, um, you know, obviously abandoned. And most importantly, and the most consistent thing, they have no head. They, um, they, were, they, so, were they tied up? Or they had just... uh, you, you can see the reports. Um, we, we can go through these, that. These, these, these detectives um, don't know any of that yet? No, these detectives can tell you stories, but they don't have the bundle of right. evidence. They can dump the files on you once we get, once you, you guys kind of go back to wherever they're right. at. They, it, right now, it's a task force, yeah. officially, as of mid-March. Okay, so right... Um, it, they weren't... It, it, it's... Sorry, it's go ahead. The, the, the most recent victim was June 2nd. And what's today's date? Yes. Third. June 3rd. Yesterday. Okay. Okay, so what do you guys think? Do we want to look at the bodies first, or do we want to go to the most recent site? I'd like to go to the site first. first, since, you know, the bodies are going to keep wherever they are probably better than the site right. will. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Sounds good. Okay, so you guys, you, you are uh, you're now uh, temporary owners of a uh, Plymouth Grand Fury 1986. Yeah. Uh, that's a, an off tan and is hideously cop-like. Um, like it is, it looks like every other police car in New York City without the NYPD on the side of it. Um, and you follow Anderson and Solaski uh, south uh, through uh, Springfield Gardens, up and around uh, to what is technically Far Rockaway, but people call this neighborhood Somerville um, to a particular place. Uh, let's see. It's called Bayswater Park. It's a peninsula that pokes out facing JFK. It's a half dozen uh, small, uh, unkempt, 
playground like play sets, um, some cement runabouts, um, a couple, you know, droopy trees, high grass on all sides leading off into the bay, into Jamaica Bay. Um, and, you know, I won't say filthy, but not exactly super clean. Um, as you guys pull up, and Anderson and Salaski get out. There are dozens of police officers. There's a, a, a lineup out front where you can see um, Ernie Anastas from Eyewitness News and Chuck Scarborough and all these news reporters are obviously gathered up. You guys are brought past the cordon and, and let in. Um, and basically, there's a trodden path. You keep seeing guys in blue bootied suits coming up out of the weeds carrying bags back towards the, um, the trucks. Uh, and no one really pays very much attention to you. There are dozens of personnel milling about. Uh, but Salaski points down the bridge. He's eating a White Castle burger and kind of this is a party. It's almost like a barbecue. Can, can I change into my hiking shoes instead of my uh, business suit shoes? Sure. Sure. No. Okay. Well, so I want to kind of head down there and see, I want to see where the body was okay. found. And as we're going, kind of take in the surroundings and kind of like, okay, we, do we know, do we know roughly when the killing happened? Has that been made, had been decided yet? No, the body, the body hasn't been looked at extensively. It's going in for autopsy today. Um, it's, it's been moved up the schedule, obviously for specific reasons. The only takeaway they had in the last 18 hours since the body was discovered is that the, the marks in the chest were most likely self-inflicted. And that was at a, at a glance from the medical examiner who worked the other three cases. So are there, um, are, are there, uh, are there signs that there, that this place is trafficked? Like do homeless people live here? You know, is there garbage around? Yes. Yeah, there's, I mean, you, you see the standard, you know, um, McDonald's cups, um, you know, tarpaulins thrown into the weeds. Uh, you see crack files everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, crack is the newest thing. Uh, New York, the number of murders in just the last 11 months has doubled. And they, they blame it mostly on this new drug crack, which is everywhere now. Um, you, you read a case file at the FBI about drug threats and this was the top drug threat for the United States so th there's files everywhere uh, if you're not familiar they're little plastic they're you know about the size of one segment of your pinky uh, little plastic tube with a cap that's usually colored uh, or has a stamp in it indicating something um, like who sold it or you know what what brand it is it's almost like a Coca-Cola you know yeah. So when you walk down, uh, a couple more of those blue booty guys vanish. But you're you're looking at a man and a woman who are obviously police detectives, um, marching out distances in mud, very carefully moving around a large central area which has a bunch of um, yellowed pins kind of placed in the ground, um, which is obviously where the body was. Um, and they're talking to one another quietly and, and you know, occasionally extruding a um, tape measure, which the other will grab, shout out a number, and they'll write it down. Um, but basically, if you imagine a park ends, it goes into high grass, there's smashed down areas of reeds, and there's a big muddy area where the body was, and then it leads right into the water. Like, if you just kept walking, you'd be in Jamaica Bay. Um, they're down there and um, they kind of look up when you enter the area because you're obviously not NYPD um, and uh, the man who's kind of overweight and balding uh, looks up and, and he says uh, help ya um, okay so speaking out of character who's, who's our best crime scene person of our four characters what, what's that going to rely on Forensics or search or that's probably going to be probably me. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll sort of I'll sort yeah. of look to her, look to her and defer to uh, Agent Tig then to uh, to take the lead on this part of it. Okay. Okay. So uh, very quick introductions are made. 
Uh, these are the two detectives on the task force that are the, the main go-to detectives. There's, a half, there's you know, 22 people working the case now. But um, this is Detective First Grade Michael Whitner. Uh, he's a career NYPD. And uh, his, his partner is Detective Second Grade Norma Woods. Uh, they shake hands. They seem uh, happy to have the FBI here, of all things. Um, and you've seen it fall either way. It either goes almost 100% we hate you, or thank God you're here, maybe you can tell us what the hell's going on. <laughs> um, and these guys seem to fall into that category. Uh, and they're more than eager to show you around. Um, so they give you a very quick rundown. They basically... They list the name of the guy, his kind of preferences, where they found him, that kind of stuff. And I can read that off to you if you like. Yeah. Um, he, he basically, he's, he's a down on his luck accountant who fell in with crack. He's got priors. They know him. He's a guy named Irving Fisher. He's been identified from a tattoo and from fingerprints. Uh, he's 44 years old, he's in the midst of a divorce. Uh, it's contentious and nasty. Uh, but they don't think his wife had anything to do with it or alibi's good. Uh, they think this is, you know, they, they really, Whitner is really certain that these all have to do with drug use, even though two of the, the victims didn't show any drugs in their system. Um, and he basically says, the other thing we got is Fisher's car is up there parked. Uh, it's a Chevy Malibu. You probably saw when you were coming in. So you think these are drug related deaths? I, I don't I don't know. I think I you know, we're we're not the experts, but the way we're looking at this right now is this is you know, the the precincts we call this crackland. This is where it's all made. Uh, so either that's how this guy's finding his people. Like either they're they're involved in crack and he he moves in those circles, or it's worse. He's using it as a lure to get them places and then mess them up. I mean, I've seen people do amazing things to get this drug, like stuff you wouldn't believe. Hmm. And no so, signs of the heads or anything like no, that? Only no, no, no. And Norm is scratching her head and she's like, you know, I, I you know, we find body parts a lot. Hmm. Like, way more than you might think. We find hmm. feet and hands and heads and, you know, it, it's in the, in the late 70s when I, when I started coming up, it was like every second weekend you'd find someone's body part. You know, it wasn't a big deal. But we can't fucking find their heads. They're not anywhere. That's not normal. Like, usually a wash up or something. And if it's on the bay, right, if they cut it off and chucked it in the bay, it would turn up in, you know, in the wildlife reserve or on Fort Tilden or Howard Beach or something in two weeks. We haven't seen shit. We haven't even had a piece of a head. Are any uh, the other body parts mutilated in any way, or? Well, you're going to want to talk to the doc about all that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you guys have a lot of notes. Uh, they, they have a they have a dump box for you, a file. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look for the commander, the wa oh, where is he today? So she she's going through her beeper and flipping through numbers, and she's she's at, she she basically hands you uh, take a, a marker pen and says you know write this down. So she lists the number and she says, that's the commander's uh, number at, at the uh, command center. So that's his direct line. You'll be able to talk to him. Uh, sorry about this. So we, we all knew you were coming in. We're all actually very happy to have you here. Uh, God knows we can use the help. He's a little on the fence. He's kind of old school. You know, he's, he's under LaGuardia. He kind of ran things. He was on the Son of Sam stuff. So he thinks he knows enough and and you hear uh Whitner laughing and going yeah he knows enough to fuck it all up um so they obviously there's no love lost with whoever's commanding this uh group um but basically they're they're looking around and um Whitner uh hands across a, a bag and says uh this is a bunch of uh of the crack files we recovered there's a half dozen brands here um yeah, if you don't know, it's like cocaine, you know, they stamp the bags, you find the gang that's involved with it, maybe they have something to do with it. So he hands you a baggie, um, he says, we got tons of them, we, we, we don't even know where to follow up. So uh, they're obviously off in their own good, uh, you know, their own little uh, investigative uh, fugue. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they're excusing themselves. They're being relatively well, polite for what's I've, going I've got on. a question for one of the detectives before they before they vanish. Sure. Um, so, is there a, are there any patrol officers that that swing out this way? Uh, so, uh, Whitner is is like what he, he he asks Woods. He's like, is this is this the sixty seventh? Like, and what Woods? stands on the hill and looks around uh, back towards the city and says, yeah, it's probably the 67th. So he's, she says, y- you can go to the 67th in Edgemere and ask. We haven't talked to those guys yet. We'll, we'll do it. It'll be on, the, it's, you know, it's on the breakdown. Mm-hmm. It's just we're so overwhelmed with physical evidence right now. We don't know what, what to leave and what to take. There's so much shit. I mean, we're walking out with uh, Happy Meal boxes and D- is this uh, this so, does this little this form land formation we're on here? Does it have a name? Yeah, it's, it's Bayswater Park. Bayswater Park. Yeah. Oh. So they're you know they're they're they're, they're being relatively uh, forthcoming, and you know they they don't want to seem rude, but they're like they they literally ended with like, do you, is there anything else? I can tell you before we can get back to this. I mean, we'd want to see where the you body, see the, yeah, where the body was actually. Okay, so right. Woods Woods hunkers down right where, kind of right where she is, and starts mm-hmm. pointing. She says, you know, legs splayed towards the water. She's drawing out a shape with her hand, kind of pointing, and you can see where the pin marks in the ground with the there's kind of a wire around all this stuff. Um, and she says, uh, you know, no head. Uh, there's a knife in the dirt. We have that knife up at the uh, uh, at the cruiser. Uh, does it look and, like the head was removed at the scene, or does it look like that it happened and the body was brought here after? I mean, well, where's, where's all I'll, the blood? I'll, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the other problem. When you're dealing with stuff like this, like he, he points around at the mud. He says, when, you, when you're dealing with stuff like this, you know, you get some spray. Sometimes it'll even hit the high grass and you can track it. But, um, you know, it, it's been a tide since this guy's been here. I mean, he was basically floating when we got here. Uh, what about well, what about the other victims who were found? Could you tell us if the heads had been removed at the scene? Yeah, so, so they, they briefly talk to one another, and Woods breaks off and starts walking with you guys, talking while you're looking around in the grass. Whitner is back to doing something. Um, but Woods is like, she, she basically, she lists the name. She's like, Brian Reeves, uh, first victim, known fuck up. I dealt with him twice myself, crackhead, uh, found, uh, the underpass, uh, in far Rockaway, um, maybe a mile from here, maybe, maybe a little bit more, uh, you know, crack in the system, burn fingers, all the standards, no head. And we didn't think very much of that to begin with. I mean, like I said, we've seen some crazy shit. We had a kid light some other guy on fire last week by dumping a tire with gasoline around his neck. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. At the time we went, okay, someone cut off a fucking crackhead's head. Big deal. Um, but then the news started reporting on the second killing, and we hadn't even really noticed it. I mean, they brought the body in. It had been typed. Uh, number two is Jacqueline Hall. And this is where things went apeshit, right? She's an ex-teacher. She's, you know, prim and proper. She's not a druggie. Mm. Um, so they got, you know, she's from out of town. They got they got a little worried about that. Where, where is she um, from? Uh, oh, sorry. She's talking about Karen Vincent. Jacqueline Hall's from uh, Atlantic Beach. Karen Vincent, victim three, is from upstate New York. Was visiting a cousin in Far Rockaway. Um, so we got good numbers on that. Anyway, by that time, uh, the Post and uh, Newsday picked up on all this. They were calling them, like, you know, the head man, or they had photos, they had all this shit. If someone had been leaking something. So by that time, Koch, you know, reactive as always, had to come out and say, oh, you know, we got a serial killer, we're going to investigate it. Started a task force, uh, was, you know, like uh, mid to late April. Um, so we've been dealing with that since then. And we were all hoping we would be seeing this again, but it seems to happen with some uh, regular intervals here. 
and uh, you know, I like to see my kids grow up. So I want to go home sometime soon. Hopefully, this will stop. She seems yeah. exhausted. Uh, was okay. So my last question here is: Was Reeves found immediately after he was killed, or was the body? Did the body sit there a couple of weeks? Well, this is one of the benefits of having a drug culture here. Uh, she says is there are people on foot or on bikes everywhere in parks, doubly so. So they're there all hours, all day. Uh, we got, you know, these bodies don't lay here for more than four or five hours. You know, you go upstate, you go, what was that, uh, at those Adirondack killings where the guy cut people up in the woods, you don't find them for six months. Nothing like that here. There's so much foot traffic. Like in Far Rockaway, for example, people walk the streets 24-7. You can't get away with anything, which is kind of shocking. We haven't seen anybody come in and report any of this shit. I mean, the other important thing you need to know if you're going to be working the street here is these kids do not fucking care. So be careful. Like, this is not the drug culture you're used to in a standard city. This is, this is fucked up. It's like Thunderdome levels here. All right. Good to know. So, so she, she shakes hands and seems very genuinely happy you're here. Uh, she says, Can we, you know, we, we, should, we should set up and have breakfast or something this week. Uh, you know, we always get eggs. Uh, we can all sit down and, and compare notes. Trade, trade cards um, for phone numbers? Yeah, yeah, you guys can all do that. Um, and she, she points her, you know, thumb back at Whitner and says, you know, don't, don't worry about him. He's, he's on board. This is not about you. This is, you know, he's up for review. He's, it's a bad time for him. Yeah, it's all right. So she, she takes all the cards and hands out her own. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar, most of, most of this is done with beepers. Uh, so you'll be beeped. You have to find a pay phone or some of the squad cars have radio phones, but not yours. Um, Cool. So you're basically cut free. Uh, you can walk the crime scene. No one's stopping you. Yeah. Well. I, I want to check out the car, his car. Okay. So uh, you go back to the Malibu. Uh, it's already been dusted. Um, so all the doors are open. There's a bunch of, uh, you know, gray white dust spread over every obvious grab area on the handles, on the window, on the. Um, and there's two guys in, in uh, kind of white cellophane-like uh, suits with goggles on who step away from the car when you guys show up. They don't even really get in your way. Um, but basically, uh, it, it's a Chevy Malibu. It's relatively new, you know, within the last three years. Uh, it smells like hell. So, Like he's been living in it? or Yeah, it smells like someone cra has crapped or pissed in it a couple times and probably dumped out the contents unless it's still in there. Um, there's a bunch of stuff lined up on uh, a uh, PVC sheet outside and each of those things are numbered um, and they seem to be items pulled from the car. There's a bunch of crack vials again. Um, there, uh, th there is a large... Uh, plaster-like bucket, which has a black tar-like liquid in it, which smells like hell. Um, the uh, Basically chatting with the guys on the scene, you find out the car had already run down. Someone had left the engine on. Um, there are... Uh, there, there's obviously... Someone has been kind of either squatting in the car. There's, you know, discarded clothes, that kind of stuff. Um it's pretty filthy and it smells awful. Mm -hmm. The bucket with the tar-like substance, do they have any sense of what that is? Uh, one of the guys pulls off his goggles and goes, uh, that's shit. Oh, well, <laughs> there you go. Now we know. Yeah. So, so he says, we're, you know, they're going to do whatever they do with it at the lab. And man, am I glad I don't work there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it'll probably be in the report. Uh, day after tomorrow, maybe a little bit earlier than that. The uh, the clothes so, that that they he pulled say, out of the car, do they are they a consistent size? Like like, does it look like? Yeah, you're looking at you're you're looking at a half dozen changes of clothes that uh, you know has slowly been sweat ringed and kind of gross grossly cut up. Um, so basically, 
you're looking at a, you know what a, an accountant at the end of the world would wear. Um, you know, an old there's an old tie. Uh, there's blood stains on some of the items, but not an absurd amount. Um, you see, there's burn marks on lapels and on wrists and things like that. Um, it's uh, you know it's obviously his work clothing uh, done over by spending a lot of time on the street. Uh, did they they mention that the the knife was up at the, one of the squad cars? Yeah, you're gonna go look yeah. for the knife. Yeah, I think it's probably sure. okay. So you find the knife at, at one of the uh, medical examiner cars. It's basically it's you you can look at it, but they don't want you to handle it. Um, it it's it's a cheap cheap chrome knockoff of like a Rambo type knife. I mean it it. it, it Flimsy blade and or strong blade or yeah, flimsy. Yeah, yeah, you know, with a little saw ridge and right. It's obviously something you would buy in a like a five and dime shop downtown, or it's not a real, really effective I mean, knife. It, I mean, you you would guess it would bend or is break. Is it covered in blood? Used a lot. Yeah, yeah, and the blood's been typed and matched. Um, they believe it's Fisher's blood. They already um, tried to take they, prints. Basically, the. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's been printed. The medical examiner made the call almost immediately saying the angle of the cut and the wounds on the chest, you know, the clotting agents and all this kind of stuff, this all happened before death. Um, and they're pretty sure he used his left hand uh, to try and cut this stuff into his chest. Um, now, this is what brought you into the case. He had cut uh, Acadian cuneiform items into his chest. Uh, and the, the group does not like anything like that. <laughs> they, get, they get very paranoid. The key and key form and not just random cuts. Yeah, no, they, they definitely, they're, they're definitely shaped cuts of uh, an ancient language. Well, how did they figure that out? Uh, it went to the Museum of Natural History in New York, which it almost always does. Um, they, they, they very occasionally have to involve someone, you know, does anybody um, uh, speak Hittite? And it, the answer is yes. Uh, if when the answer is yes, it's some schmuck in the American Museum of Natural History. So um, you can talk to that guy. Uh, basically, once you get the massive report from the task force, it's going to open up a lot of different ang angles of investigation. Um, if you want to talk to that guy, I'm sure they can arrange it. But basically, he glanced at it and went, oh, yeah, that's, that's this, that's this, that's this. He seemed nonplussed by it and uh, was like... <laughs> He, uh, the cops were kind of amazed he could solve it so quickly. So that he, it was obviously then recognizable as. Yes. Um, did that? Were, yeah. Were they able to determine what it said or what the? Symbol? Well, I mean, cuneiform is unusual uh, in that it's um, uh, it's word group, it's letter groupings, so right. it's phonetic groupings. Uh, the best you could guess is that it's 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 some sort of noun, um, but uh, the lettering. Let me find what it said. Uh, it said S so gol, uh, E S S O G O L, um, and he said it could be a city, it could be someone's name, it could be, you know, it's not a word. It's a it's a descriptive term of of a thing was his guess. And it was written in the right way as if you were looking at his chest reading it, or does it look like it was done in a mirror? Yeah, no, it, it looked like he he, uh, he wrote it correctly. It, it's facing the correct way, and cuneiform is directional. So that, that is a significant thing. Hmm. So it, it looks like um, it would look if, if I were, if I knew cuneiform and wanted to carve a message on a, on a, on, on wood or something. Yeah. Yeah. Barring, barring the tilt to the blade and kind of the tilt to the lettering, mm -hmm. it, it looks natural. Okay. All right. This was just found on this victim, right? Yep. Okay. They hadn't seen anything like that before. Mm -hmm. So none of the other victims had any odd markings or self, self mutilation that they could tell. Not, or? not that they could tell. Um, the other three victims, the, the worst, you know, the, the worst uh, injury on them was that they had no head. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but besides that, there was nothing like this. Okay. So, 
I think we probably need to see the bodies, man. Yes, yes. onto the bodies. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And the files, are the files going to be at the same place, or are they somewhere else? Uh, they, they can basically, they can have those two, uh, Anderson and, and Salaski run. They're, they're your lap dogs. So you can, you can kind of get them to do what you need. If you want a big dump of the case files, that's easily done. Uh, you probably need a hotel. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, there's the, the, um, group has, uh, oh, oh, sorry, I won't say group. The uh, headhunter task force has set up in Rosedale just outside of JFK airport. Um, it's only you know, two miles from this scene, maybe three. Um, basically you can drive there and go into the precinct and pick up a bunch of files and go get a hotel. There should be some hotels right outside the airport, right? Yeah, there's tons. Yeah, so it's pretty easy. Cool. So we'll set you up in the airport at the... Alice in Rosedale. Okay, so you guys basically dump, dump your gear, drive out, um, set up at a place called the Palace Inn in Rosedale across the Nassau Expressway from JFK. Um, it, it's a standard, you know, 24-room, two-level hotel. Um, it, it's not a dump, but it's not exactly the best. Uh, he, you dump your shit there, and then you can head off to the uh, task force headquarters if you like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So by the time you do this, uh, you know we started in the morning. It's going on around uh, two thirty in the afternoon. By the time you kind of roll into the task force headquarters, um, there you know are twenty plus people here uh, working. Most of them are clerks, uh, but you see several operational police. And one guy breaks away, seeing you guys, and kind of heads over. Um, and uh, he's, a, he's a police lieutenant. He's wearing it on his badge. He's an older man, kind of gets spiky, gray hair. He's pretty tall. Uh, he shakes hands. He says his name is uh, Glickman. He's the spokesperson. Uh, you guys are the feds, right? That's us. Uh, you know, if we do, any, we do any joint statements or anything like that, you know, I don't know what the mayor's office has gotten through to you about, uh, but if we do any joint statements, you know, let's talk it over first. Don't just dump stuff on us. Don't make any... You know, I'd appreciate it if you didn't pop on to CNN or something like that and drop now, something without telling us. Uh, about no, it. We're, look, we're here to assist you. You know, this isn't uh, this. The, none of this is federal, so we're not we're not here to try to to try to take over anything or to try to speak out of turn. So, if we're being okay. helpful, so he, you tell he, us. He if we're not, you tell us. He shakes he shakes hands all around and um, divulges the case file, which is a huge kind of file of facts. Uh, you know, and, and dumps it and says, this is, this is pretty recent. You know, it goes up to yesterday. Uh, there's going to be more coming. So you can just stop by and you can talk to any of the, the watch officers and they'll get you what you need. Um, so he, <laughs> he's shouting and this guy comes running over and basically um, in 15 minutes, you guys are listing names and beeper numbers and he's writing this all down. Uh, so you guys are on call officially on the alert watch. So if anything happens, you'll get a beep. You can hook up with Whitner and, and the others. Um, you're basically being treated as part of the task force now. Um, so uh, Glickman, you know, does the standard small talk and then shouts for uh, someone to come over and uh, a, a shorter, older man, maybe in his 60s, um, who's wearing a, a full... Um, uh, police officer's uniform. Uh, he's got a deputy commander badge, and uh, it's his ID is Brooks. He comes over and uh, he shakes hands all around. He's effusive with praise for the FBI to the point of blowing smoke up your ass. Um, but basically, you get the idea. He, he's been placed in charge by Koch, Mayor Koch, to kind of make this all go away. So anything that'll help him do that. Uh, is seen as a you know a good thing. So he, he shakes hands, and if you guys don't have any direct questions for him, he's going to disappear pretty quickly. No, yeah, that's fine. No, I don't at all. Cool. But can we can we talk among ourselves for a minute here? Sure. So, so you want to split up? I mean, I think I can start going through case files if you want to go. Well, so we've got we've got the case files, we've got the bodies, and we've got the other crime scenes. 
Um, yeah. How? Uh, what What are our relative forensic skills? I mean, I've got I've got thirty sort of standard FBI agent training, but I'm not an expert. Is that the same for everybody else? I mean, I know Tig Tig is a lot I've better. Got yeah. Got a fifty. I wasn't paying attention during that class, so uh, <laughs> I apparently don't have much at all. <laughs> all right. What about Alton? Okay. What was, what was... Forensic. How good are you at it? He's frozen, I think. Oh, yeah, he's, wait, what? Is he frozen? I think he is. Might want to turn off your video, Kevin. Uh, Shane's typing. Okay. okay. Maybe Jim Kelly is typing. <laughs> All right. Oh, he's back. There he is. Um, is, is okay. That... You there, Kev? Yeah, it... It would go through periods where everything would be fine for like 10 minutes and then it'd be like half a minute where everyone would garble out and then it'd be fine for 10 minutes. And... No, this will probably work better with your video off. So what is your forensics, Kev? Uh, 30%. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so TIG is yeah. the highest, which well, makes sense. Okay. Okay. So I think I think we ought to at least stick with the buddy system. So you know we can send maybe maybe Tig and Green to look at the bodies, and Alton and I can uh, can uh, either keep looking through the the case files or start looking at other scenes. Probably case files first, right? Because the other scenes are ancient and they're not going to yeah. tell us much. Yeah. Um, okay. So that that's no problem. Um, Basically, we'll handle the case files uh, briefly first. Um, the case files are huge and obviously lots of um, dead-end information listed in there. Um, but the gist of it is two of the victims had known drug affiliations and, and had you know their blood tested positive for cocaine. Um, one is questionable. That would be Jacqueline Hall. Um, they didn't find any cocaine in her blood, but she, she's not been arrested for drug use, but was in an area known to be, you know, consistent with drug use. Uh, and Karen Vincent, uh, had no drug use and no history of drug use. And was it uh, visiting relatives or whatever? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the high levels there, the other, the other weirdness is the head, the head wound is consistent between all four. Whatever caused it um, exhibited uh, a large amount of force, almost to the point where the skin exploded. It's cut, not sawed. It's not cut. Oh. It's more crushed oh. um, and burst. So uh, the wound itself is completely uneven and ragged. The neck is severely damaged. The bone, the bone that remains in the neck is pulverized. Um, and the wound is, is very odd. It doesn't, the, the, the coroner, uh, in the description says something like, uh, the jaws of life or, mm -hmm. um, a hydraulic press or something weird. It, it's not a cutting instrument. Uh, quick question. Jacqueline Hall, where she's found, is that a body of water right there? Uh, Jacqueline Hall. Uh, yes. So she's, if you see the little highlight, uh -huh. there's a little, uh, kind of a water s sticking in there a little right. bit. Yeah. It's a canal. So all of them are found near water. Yes. Um, so, so you guys, uh, you and, uh, sorry, Killian and Alton spend hours pouring through these reports. Um, and you feel like you get a pretty decent handle on this stuff. Uh, so if you need any information or anything, you can just ask me and I'll be able to dump it to you. But high level, the police have no idea what's going on. They have no active suspects. They believe it might have something to do with the, the, um, the drug trade in the area. 
um, but that's the best they have. Um, they, they're following the FBI profiling model and have come up with a picture that would match much of what you guys would come up with. White male, uh, mid thirties, uh, well to do, uh, no criminal record lives alone. The, the standard, you know, Hannibal Lecter. I mean, were there, were there, uh, <laughs> I mean, were there enough, were, were there enough blood stains at the other locations to make it look like a, uh, like that's where the head came off or were they all in the water? They were almost all on the edge of the water. Um, they like, like, um, like the detective had mentioned, there are some, uh, when you imagine the water here, you have to imagine that marshland runs down into the, into the water itself. And there's a spray of maybe five foot tall reeds. Uh, and this is super common in the whole New York area. It's all over the place. And uh, at, at the Karen Vincent crime scene in particular, there was a spray of blood across uncrushed reeds. Um, like when you move through these reeds, they're destroyed. They're folded flat and they remain that way. So you can tell paths have been cut. And, um, and as far as they could tell, only Vincent's path went out into the reeds and then collapsed. There were no intervening paths or other people or unless they were walking single file with her. So it looks like she walked down to the water's edge and then was killed there. Yeah. Um, they've also, um, but th there's also a note that Brian J. Reeves, Brian J. Reeves and Irving Fisher, uh, had crack vials marked with a crow, which are consistent with a group called the United Blood Nation. Uh, which is a known gang, uh, members of the Bloods um, that operate either out of um, Edgemere or Far Rockaway. Their headquarters are unknown, um, but they are a, a splinter group from the Brooklyn Bloods. And the, those vials were found near all of the scenes where the bodies were? Two. Or just two of them? Yeah. No, lots. Oh. Um, yeah, they don't. Um, oh no, just two of the two of the victims, but lots of crack bombs. Which two? Which two uh, victims? This is not it. Uh, Brian J. Reeves and Irving Fisher. And what was the name of the local gang? Uh, the United Blood Nation. They they go by the Bloods here, but um, you guys have all had dealings with gangs. The, the Bloods are a national franchise, mm -hmm. franchise gang. Um, it's not unusual for locals to spin up their own kind of versions of the franchise gangs and slowly join them and or kind of make their own more popular brand of the same old thing. All right. Um, okay, so other things I want to do are... Um, well, all, all of that's going to take us a long time, I imagine, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, going through these files are going to take you into the late yeah, evening. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was wondering, um, how much how much gear did we? I mean, we we flew up here, right? So we didn't come. Yeah. We didn't come in a standard. It was last minute. Yeah, we didn't come in a standard yeah. bureau car that was loaded with with supplies. No. No, you would have your uh, service weapons and very little yeah, else. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, so one thing I want to do um, before it gets too late is, like, do we have a contact number for somebody at the New York um, FBI office? Like, yeah, you, you have the New York FBI office I mean, is number. Is there somebody that's designated as, like, our liaison or something like that, or are we just... Uh, you're supposed to report in. Um, but you're here as consultants. You're not even really active. Um, and I mean, you, you have your, you have your powers of arrest and all that kind of stuff. They just want to keep you under the radar. Um, mostly because Koch wants this win for himself. Yeah. 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 So, uh, they may be trying to do things like, you know, in New York, um, the New York post, the daily news, these kind of rags tend to poke around, especially when the feds become involved, to try and expose that that's going on. That's a story. 
you know, uh, short term. Okay. So they may be trying to keep you off the uh, the roster. Right. Okay. Your So I want to try to find in the file as much information about the 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 writing and what the sure. from the the Met said. Okay. Um, let me let me get his info. Um, so his name is uh, Dr. Bryant M. Tomasino. He's PhD at works at the American Museum of Natural History uh, in Middle East and Ancient World Collections as a language specialist. Um, he basically, um, the long and the short of it is uh, a detective looked at the symbols, said, I'll be damned, drove home, came back with an early reader book, um, which had like life in Mesopotamia. And you know, pictures of guys standing on mountains and stuff for his kid. And the writing looked identical to this writing. Two phone calls later, they had a guy from the Ar American Museum of Natural History there. Um, he took like a half, you know, uh, a half an hour to look at it, uh, pronounced it uh, Akkadian cuneiform uh, from the the um, uh, the later period, or whatever that means. Uh, and wrote a half dozen lines on it, basically saying it's these phonetic sounds. No, he doesn't know what they mean. It's probably a name. Uh, it, it looks like a name, uh, but he's never heard of it. Um, and he left his card and his number. What was so. what was the expert's name? Bryant M. Amasino. Okay. Uh, and his card lists him as a specialist in Akkadian, Sumerian, Elamite, Ebalite, and Hittite. All right. Well, Kevin, what else are we trying to dig up here in the files? See there? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, hey. Hello. He's there. Hello. We hear you. Is there anything else we wanted to dig up in in the files on our end, Kevin? Agent Alton. Uh. Not right now. Not that I can think of. Okay. Let me try reconnecting because okay. everything okay. was fine right up until you started answering my question, and then it it's not yeah. again. So. Oh no! Really the uh, so were, the, were there were there cars or vehicles belonging to any of the other victims near where they were found? No, but that's not unusual in New York. Uh, if, if anything, Fisher stands out as having a vehicle. Okay. Um, well, the only other thing I was going to do then is is try to put in a call to um, actually like while I'm while I'm here, see if there's at the task force headquarters, if do they have like one of those big maps that has all of the precincts borders laid out? Yeah. So I want to find find yeah. our, our crime scenes and identify, you know, which police precinct goes with which and write down okay. con you know the the main the numbers of the detective units for each of those and um okay. so we can have those available but um but the one i want to try to call is the one that goes with um with fisher where he was found okay yeah it's it's the 67th precinct out of edgemere uh new york mm -hmm. and uh the, the officers listed uh in kind of that time period at the park are among some of the reporting chain for the body discovery. So what that means is one of the locals alerted one of the police officers who alerted the task force that there was a body down yeah. there. So you have a, you have an officer's name from that precinct. Yeah, I want to see if I can reach him or her. OK. So. Um, Basically, uh, you and Alton spend until after dinner uh, looking at all these files, and then you ring out to the 76th, uh, oh, sorry, 67th, and um, 
it's uh, Officer D. Giovanni you're supposed to talk to. And basically, he's not on duty now, but uh, the desk officer gives you his home phone number after he finds out who you are. Um, and, uh, you know, it's up to you whether you want to call him or not. It's, it's going on 8 o'clock. No, at that's night. all right. I'll, I'll, uh, we, can, we can follow up with him later. Okay. And uh, Ticanello and Green uh, are heading towards the uh, Nassau County Medical Center to go look at the bodies. Yep. Okay. So basically, you guys get there at around uh, 3.30, 4 o'clock. Um, there's a, a press shitstorm out front, obviously. Um, you guys go around back and are brought in after showing your IDs. Uh, and you're on the cleared list. You're moved inside. Um, and um, basically, you guys arrive as uh, they're preparing the body uh, for autopsy. Doc, Dr. Robert Bingham, the Queen's Medical Examiner, um, is down there with the body. There's a half dozen police taking photos, uh, cataloging things, writing things down. Uh, everybody's in full, you know, gear. Um, it's in a big, uh, puke green, uh, tiled room with a bunch of metal, uh, slab blood draining tables. Mm -hmm. Uh, and looking at Irving's body is, is quite disturbing. Uh, if you don't have, uh, surgery or medicine or anything like that. I'm going to hang back out of the way at all because I have no ability with any of this. But Did you say Robert Bingham? Yeah. Yes. That's my grandfather's name. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. yeah, I heard that. Okay. So Robert Robert Bingham is the, the medical examiner here. He's the guy who's performed the autopsies on the three previous victims. He's preparing to open up Fisher um and, uh, you know, there's a bunch of people in the room. It's a large room. You're on the cleared list. Uh, they don't do anything like scrub up or anything. It doesn't really matter. Are, are all these people here to observe his autopsy? Yeah. yeah, there's people taking photos of the body in different states. And as they open it uh, for con stomach contents and stuff like that, there'll be photos taken. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask if I can be right there with him. And sure, sure. They, you know, they let you in and you're... Yeah, Tig is actually a forensic pathologist, right? Yes. So um, uh, you you realize that the the spokesperson Glickman is there, and he points this out to um, Bingham, uh, who you know raises his eyebrows and asks if you want to assist him. Yes, thank you. Okay. Very so he, he basically he points over, and you know the prosector knife is over there, and you know he shows you all the gear, and he's like. We're going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to do lead. You you just follow my lead. Okay. So he, he seems happy to have you there. He doesn't seem overly concerned. He immediately starts talking to you in shorthand, so the rest of the group is kind of lost. Mm -hmm. But he's pointing at the neck wound, and he's saying, I'd really be interested if you could look at the neck wound and tell me what you think. I don't want to, you haven't looked at the case file, I'm guessing. You just got here. Right. Um, you let me know what you think. Uh, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to sully what your what your first observation is going to be. I'm going to get to the stomach contents. It's not a big deal. I don't expect anything surprising. Mm -hmm. This guy's a crackhead, right? Yeah. And you hear people, you know, nod. And so he he basically points you towards the uh, the neck. Okay. Um, and ha have you invest? Were you in uh, the investigated the other bodies? Did you point yeah. out that she's on all the other bodies? Yeah. It's, it, Bingham is one of those guys that they call in whenever they get weird shit. Right. So, um, and all, were all the wounds just like this? Did they? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's identical. I mean, I was looking at it when you, when you got here, it's, it's precisely the same. And, it, and you know, I'll be damned if I have a clear idea what it is, but you know, I have some notions. Mm -hmm. You give it a look and let me know. Yeah. Well, I'm going to definitely, you know, try to look for, uh, you know, like any uniformity in the cuts, if it looks like a, a pull, if it looks, you know, like a, a tear or a cut, or if it was done with a blade, or if it was... Okay. Do you, you want to give me a forensics roll? Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You make it? Okay. Yeah. So what you're looking at is, uh, you see uh, in... in it, oh, if yeah, you... Sorry, sorry. She may not have. She could roll a 53 and it's forensics 50. It's, 50, uh, yeah. it's fine. Um, I mean, what, what you're looking at is that this won't change. 
okay. uh, what you're looking at is if if, uh, if a human took a bird's head in its mouth, oh, okay. and pressed pressed as hard as it could with its teeth and pulled, uh, it would look something like this. So the skin is. So the it's skin, uniform, but it's, it looks like a tear. Yeah, it, it looks like something popped the head off. Okay. Um, and the neck is definitely swollen and wide and uneven. There's no clean cut or... Mm -hmm. And that's all that's missing is the head. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna say, well, you know. I, I, <laughs> so it was very unusual. I've never seen anything. What are your thoughts on it? I mean, what... He, I don't know of any... He, instrument or animal or anything that that could make this kind of a wound that i've seen. yeah he says uh, you know you may not he's, he's laughing and you know this is all very boring to him um you know this is his job so he's smiling laughing he goes you know i had the same exact reaction and this is going to sound really strange but um i i'm a terrible i'm a, like an awful driver and all the cops in the room start laughing at him <laughs> And he says, you know, I got to go to traffic court. I get parking tickets. You know, I got pulled over on the parkway. I had to do the test again. And they're all shaking their heads and laughing. Like, how the hell can we follow this guy if he can't even drive? And he's <laughs> like, and, and they showed us this video about drinking and driving and stuff. And I had to sit through it. And they had this thing in it, the Jaws of Life. You see in the Jaws of Life? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the hydraulic thing? Yeah. That's the closest that can come. That would make that. Yeah, I can see that. So and it's like, and, and they think I'm crazy. I mean, I already checked. I already made uh, Glickman, right? Mm -hmm. Ran you up a tree doing all this stuff, Glickman. There's two in the state, you know? It's not like something you can come by. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway, stomach contents, he starts rattling off stuff. Um, he's basically listing, he's digging through undigested food taking it out and, and saying you know yeah he's a crackhead you know he's eating shit and smoking shit and probably crapped his pants we'll get to that mm -hmm. uh, so he's he's you know he seems nonplussed by anything he's seeing he doesn't think he's, he's ob it's quite obvious to you he doesn't think he's going to break the crime by looking at this body right. well so in looking at the wounds that are on the chest. I'm going to ask him, you know, so I, I understand that these uh, didn't appear on any of the other victims, but, uh, you know, taking a look at this here, it looks like it didn't happen too far before death occurred. Yeah, he, he basically, he walks you over and says, you know, the clotting agent began to work here. Uh, you know, he, he says the chest, the chest wounds almost certainly occurred within a half an hour of death. He's, he's, pointing at them and he says, and, and if you look at the blade, he's holding a dummy, uh, it, it must be cut paper blade that's almost identical in size and layout. And he goes, he holds the dummy blade and goes, you know, look, you can see the angling on the cut. Um, mm -hmm. So like, you know, he lifts the skin flaps and you can see indeed the blade must have gone in from the left side. Very deep, how deep are the? Uh, you know, sometimes to the bone. Really? Yeah, so he says, this is all really serious, and you can see the bleed lines, right? So he's, you know, pointing at where, where the blood went down the chest while he was still vertical. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in, 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 looking, in, in looking at these these chest wounds, if the head hadn't been snapped off, were these wounds deep and serious enough to perhaps have caused... Nah, nah. He, he wouldn't have died. Um, you know, I, 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 you know yeah, put him up in a... A hospital room for a week but no yeah. i don't think he would have died he would have been in intense pain mm -hmm. so any so were there any hesitation marks um yeah no i not that i could see and, and you can see the intent here and he's, mm -hmm. he's pointing at the i don't know if you've seen cuneiforms mm -hmm. markings often they're you know tri three triangles pointing with a line or there are lots of little very complex movements needed and in, in, in kind of drawing these out and they're large they take up these these three, three things take up his whole chest mm -hmm. uh, but um there's no little twitches or 
partial stabs. There's it's very cleanly cut. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, he's he's excited. You notice that. Mm-hmm. So he's he's talking about this, and he says, you know, the girl we had in before, you know, she didn't have any of these markings. The head wound was identical. Uh, you know, uh, the guy uh, who what was that guy's name was victim one, and someone says uh, Reeves. He had a crackhead. So the crackhead. He was a bit bruised up, but but nothing like this. I mean, and it's not unusual to find, you know, people smacked up when they're doing drugs. Mm-hmm. So no other unusual findings in any of the other bodies that you saw that kind of raised an eyebrow. No, no. I mean, and we're we're looking for anything at this point. Right. Usually by this time we have a, you know, a a, a couple suspects maybe one or two. We have nothing. We, you know, we get call after call about this shit and you can imagine. So Glickman is bitching about that. Now the, the spokesman is saying, you know, they have a hotline. It's all garbage. Mm-hmm. When, um, you know, this is just off the, and you may, you may not know this, but when these victims were found with the heads removed or the bodies, I know they were all found around water Were these were, the torsos towards the water or away from the water? Huh. The neck. That, you think that might mean something? Well, I mean, it's just unusual that, you know, this all happened close to the water. I'm just wondering. Okay, so someone starts flipping through a file and um, says, uh, Vincent, victim three, body facing towards the water, so head towards the water. Uh, Hall, victim two. Yeah, uh, basically facing towards the water. Very close. And uh, Reeves, victim one, definitely facing towards the water. Hmm. So, yeah, maybe there's something there. Hmm. Um, so they're, they're talking. What's that? We just, we just saw a fissure where the <laughs> body was found, so it was the same. Okay. <laughs> Dogs. They're coming for you. Um, so here's, here's some Acadian cuneiform. Oh, I can't see it on there. But it does look like a pretty intricate set of symbols he's got carved on. Yeah, it's pretty complex. I mean, it's usually cut into mud, um, not someone's chest. Um, I'm gonna going going uh, back to 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 Bingham here. Um, was any, there wasn't any water in the lungs or anything that you noticed? Or no, no, they weren't. Definitely weren't drowning. Um, they weren't drowned. The, you know, we, we could tell by the lung action whether or not they were drowned. There was no water in the lungs. Okay. Um, you know, they didn't wash up or anything, as far as we can tell. You know, he he holds up the ha- the hands and he says, you know, we didn't have any um, fingerprints sloughing or skin sloughing. Okay. No insect action. No no breakdown of the uh, secondary cellulite. Um, you know, all the standard in the water stuff is just not there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're fairly certain they were dumped. Uh, they were done and dumped, like, right there. Like, whoever, whoever did this has got it down to, a, like, a, a science. Because a lot of these places, I mean, you can speak to Glickman, but they're saying, you know, these are known drug parks. Kids walk those areas all the time. It's got to be quick. How, how, can, I, can I ask a question? How accessible are the, each of the locations to vehicles? Oh, I mean, you're going through the files, so that's easily done. They, they have state maps and stuff like that. Uh, Atlantic Beach, the park at the end of Atlantic Beach where Karen Vincent was found is not readily accessible by vehicle. Um, it's a park. Like, it, it, it's a long walk from the parking so lot means to where Somebody she would have had to carry her headless body for a mile yeah, or something yeah. or, or, or whatever with, without yeah, being seen. Uh, uh, yeah, Fisher uh, is pretty close to the parking lot where he was found. It's, it's you know, you could throw a rock and probably hit the cars. Um, the Far Rockaway death, uh, Reeves, uh, is right off the edge of, um, there are these row houses off a of main street and then high reeds and then water. So to leave the road, you're, you maybe go 50 paces, you're at the water. Mm-hmm. So he's very close. Uh, and Jacqueline Hall was right on a road. Mm-hmm. Um, if you <laughs> if 
you step off the road, you know, and go maybe 25 feet, you're at the canal. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'd like to, uh, in conversing, you know, with, with Bingham, um, get a, a sample, a skin sample from around the wound of the neck. Okay. Look under a microscope to see if there's any trace evidence of, you know, sure. metal or whatever this might have been. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you, you get a, you know, a, a, a rather chunky sample from the neck. They don't seem to mind. Um, it's a segment of skin. It's about that big, mm -hmm. about the size of a postage stamp. Uh, and it's tissue going into the neck. It's actually a, a section of it. Uh, and, you know, there's jokes tossed around, like, obviously, they're not going to be releasing these bodies to the next of kin. Right. No, nobody, no, nobody wants to see a headless right. corpse. Yeah. Um, so, so you get this, and, you know, if you want to take some time and use some of the facilities at the medical center, you can do a, a proper study of it, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's going to take you some hours to do that. Right. Um, it's up to you. You yeah. have the sample. I, oh, yeah, because I want to see if I can get any indication of whether this was maybe a machine with some metal sure. or some, you know, in, any, yeah, to see whatever I can get off, information I can get off of that. Okay, so uh, you're going to want to give me a forensics roll, um, and then just let me know what you roll. Oh, yeah, bring it, it should appear on the screen. So. No, I <laughs> not at all. Oh, geez. Okay, so you spend, you spend three and a half hours uh, cutting this tissue apart and mm -hmm. studying it and looking for microscopic remains of maybe shearing metal or things right. like that. Right. You don't find anything. Um, mm -hmm. What it does remind you of is uh, uh, meat being ripped apart by hand. Uh, it reminds you of, um, you know, literally taking a steak and going, Right. The muscles are afraid and, afraid. and yeah. But that's the best you get out of that. Okay. Um, okay, so by the time you're done with that, you're looking at, you know, it's, it's after dinner. Um, it, you guys want to do anything else or you can return to the hotel? It's up to you. Oh, this has made me want a steak. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true forensic specialist. <laughs> um, uh, so I think we should probably regroup and get some dinner and talk out what we've Found. Yeah. Okay. We have Sounds good. ideas. Um, okay, I'm going to reconnect to see if uh, Kevin can sign on. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Can you he hear us? He's typing now, so. Can't hear him. Okay. Um, Are you talking, Kevin? He's typing a lot. <laughs> to go <laughs> the cog, Carol Ann. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Amber, you might want to, uh, if if Dennis will allow it, you might want to shuffle some points over toward forensics so it's higher than 50 since that's your thing. I shuffled quite a bit over there that uh, you think I would have got as a forensic pathologist. got pretty good. Not, I mean, but, you can probably lose some of your first oh, aid and, and pump, put that I'm onto... Yeah. yeah. If you want to, it's no problem. I still would have got yeah, make, make them 70 each or however much you want to do. Yeah. Okay. Kevin, are you back among us? Can you speak? Well, physically. Not no, audibly. I can see you. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Wait. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. there you are. The volume. Yep. Um, okay, yeah, so, yeah, I don't mind if you move those points around. So, basically, you guys, you guys all, uh, find a classic diner and, and compare notes at about 10.30 that evening, um, in, in, uh, just off the Belt Parkway in Springfield Gardens. Um, and, uh, you can chat or, or, you know, we can just move on, you can crash for the evening. Well, um, I, what I'm what I'm what I'm wanting to do, and I guess I'll be looking mostly at green here, is um, is uh, see is, is think back to if uh, if we drove past any places that uh, were likely to be able to sell us shotguns. Yeah, you know, I'm sure we can find some place. Yeah. Um, just so, can you guys give me law rolls? 
shirt. What's your wall? Uh, uh, hang on. Check mine. Not, not awesome. Uh, 50, I don't think that's going to make it. One. Who's, who's was the that? 50 is mine, so that's not going to... No, that's not going to succeed. Yeah, no, someone... Mine is. That's a 10. Okay, so uh, shot, shotguns are readily, readily available in Nassau County, which is very, very close mm -hmm. to here. Like, literally, you drive on the uh, Sunrise Highway for 10 minutes that way. Mm -hmm. um, and you can buy this stuff readily. The, the closer you get to the city, the more right. restricted all these items become. Um, but Nassau County, Suffolk County, all out on the island, uh, they sell long rifles and ammo and all well, that. So I want to find, um, I guess, go to a newsstand or, a, I don't know, somewhere that, so, or somewhere that will have, a, um, have the uh, Yellow Pages for the nearest Nassau County okay. town, since Yellow Pages is still a thing in 1986. Yep. So you find you find that there's a there's a, uh, a guns and ammo store in Hempstead, Long Island, which is uh, literally you know 15 minutes from yeah, where okay. you are. Okay. Well, I'll call them and ask how late they're open. Okay. Yeah. So the seven seven thirty. You know, it depends on who's working. Um, it's 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 a pretty standard shop. This is actually a shop I've been to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, anyway, my plan for the evening is is to is to go out there and and uh, go shopping, unless they've already closed. Oh, you'll have to go, you'll have to go tomorrow. Okay. Well, we'll do, I'll do I'll plan uh, to do that then. Okay, sure. Um, so basically, on the fourth, uh, you're going to drive out to Hempstead early in the morning and load up on a shotgun. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll get. Uh, I mean, shit. If I've got the cash for it, I'll get four of them and. For uh, fifty shell boxes. Okay, that's probably somewhere in the range of two thousand dollars. Maybe two. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's no problem. Um, your federal ID goes a long way. Do I, do I have? Uh, nobody do I have cares. To show them my They're, actual ID. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I'd rather I'd rather not show them an, even my driver's license if I can help it. Okay. No, no, I mean, it's home defense. It's a shotgun, so they don't care. It's 86. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wild West, baby. Um, so, okay, so, yeah, no problem. You buy two of those and uh, 50 rounds each. Yeah. And uh, then, you know, drop that in the trunk and make your way back to the Rosedale um, yep. Palace. Uh, and, you know, that's 8 in the morning cut and dried by 845 you're ready to go these shotguns um it is june 4th uh the news uh, both the news day the post uh yeah and, and the daily news all have headhunter stories on the front cover uh killer loose in queens blah 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 um the post um has photos from the crime scene uh which which are edited with select black marks over certain things. Was the body still there when they got the photos? Yep. Does does really? the uh, does that does it match the other photos that like the police photos that we've seen? They are the okay, police there photos. you go. Yeah. Uh -huh. Leaked. Yep. Leaked them. All right. So, what are you guys up to? Yeah, uh -huh. what, what's our plan? I mean, what do you guys want to pursue? Clearly, it seems like something is coming out of the water and nipping off their heads. So, I don't know how we make that actionable. That's actable. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I want to talk. I want to talk to uh, what's his name the the uh, his, the historian specialist. Sure. Yeah, I forgot his name. Amatino. Let me get it. Uh, Doctor Amatino at the yeah, museum. Um, so, uh, it, Thomasino. Tom, oh, Thomas. Tom. Um, okay. You're going to have to drive. You're going to have to drive up into, into Manhattan to see him. Um, it's maybe 35 minutes, uh, 50 in bad traffic. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a normal work day. You assume he's at work. Okay. Yeah. I'll, uh, that's, that, that's what I want to do at least for the, for the morning. It might take the whole day, but, but I want to, I want to talk to him okay. in more detail. Is anybody going with you? Are you splitting up or you're all going? 
Okay, so Alton's going with Gillian. Mm -hmm. uh, Tiganello and Green, what do you have to? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I don't think the other crime scenes are going to give us any more than we've already got from the reports. We've already done the autopsy, so. Is it all fresh water, by the way, these bodies of water? No. No, no they're all salt. It wouldn't hurt to go check them out, huh? You want to make I mean, I guess we can make a quick tour of the sites and just see if there's yeah. anything that Sticks jumps out, out of so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah, one? Which well, I mean, because you did say that these, uh, a lot, well, a few of these places are frequented by drug addicts, right? Yeah, you, you, ought, places, you ought to I mean, see if there are people you can talk to who are around. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Sure, we'll do that. Yeah. Okay, okay, so which... Which um, location would you like to do first? Start with the first one of three. Okay. Okay. No problem. Um, and we'll we'll cover uh, Alton and Killian first. So you guys drive in to Manhattan. You park at the Hayden Planetarium. You know, you pay your eleven dollars. Uh, go inside. Ask at the special um, uh, special visitors desk. You are sent to the restricted stacks. Um, and basically you're marching to the back end of the American Museum of Natural History, which is pretty <laughs> impressive. It's, you know, row upon row of uh, rolling um, carts filled with bones and everything you can imagine. Um, and you're being led there by a, a rather um, withdrawn woman who eventually brings you into a room uh, that looks very much like a, um, uh, a high school classroom. Uh, there are three men in it. One looks up. Tomasino is uh, semi-balding, curly-haired, tall and thin, uh, eternally smiling, split, you know, gap-toothed in the front, uh, carries a notebook everywhere with him, and uh, hops up when you guys come in uh, and starts immediately apologizing for the Post story. Well, good. the good news is I haven't even seen it. He goes, well, the guy just turned up, like, right outside my apartment at 11.30 last night and started ringing the doorbell until I talked to him. So I just told him as little as I could. Um, anyway, anyway, sorry about that. All right. He was really annoying. Who was it that, uh, who was it so, you spoke to? Uh, Ma uh, what's his name? Moskowitz. Moskowitz. I got his card. Can I see it? So he goes and digs around. Yeah, he hands you a card. All right. I'll, it's a it's a post. Yeah. I'll I'll, I'll copy the details down off the card into my notes. Okay. So Tomasino is uh, he's got four books open on his desk. Um. One uh, one is uh, got a Greek title you don't recognize. You sure? Uh, another. I'm a, cla is, I'm a classics uh, professor who knows Greek. Sure, give me a roll. You yeah. are? You studied the class. Oh, yeah, that's right. Studied the class. Uh, I don't think I know that much Greek. Hold on. I just I just know enough to brag about it. <laughs> uh, that, that'll miss it by six points. Okay, so he... Um, the Greek book you don't recognize... Uh, there's this, another book with cuneiform markings in it, drawn in etching. That's obviously from the 30s or the 40s. He's got it opened. He's got little post-it notes on particular things, and then uh, he has Herodotus's histories open. Um, and there's uh, a, a portion of the text under, underlined in pencil. And he goes, I, "I found your name." Oh yeah, where? So, let's. It's in Herodotus's histories. Uh, it's also in uh, Isidore by McCool. Do you know it? So he folds open this book and he says, uh, it's a Syrian god. Uh, S -og -o. E -s -o -g -o -l. Is that that's, that's the phonetics. So he says, uh, the marking looked like this. He, he's got a little, uh, in the second cuneiform book, he's got it marked with the, the post-it note. And it looks identical to the chest mark um, that Fisher had. And uh, he says Herodotus has a couple things to say about this. He says uh, he's practiced. He's a god who practices excess in all things. 
He's a god of murderers and thieves. Uh, there are abominations from Syria. Now, Syria, you got to take this with a grain of salt. Syria was just everything north. Mm-hmm. You know, you'd say Syria like someone would say North America or, you know, so it's, it's really hard to tell. But the cuneiform, the Akkadian kind of does put paid to it. It's about the 5th century, maybe, this stuff. Anyway, it's some sort of cult. Like a, uh, you know, uh, there, there was a whole bunch of mystery cults at the time. It was something like that. Right. Does it have any modern occult significance? Uh, I asked Abigail about that. So he, he's, he's getting wistful and walking around the room and coming back with more books. And he says, uh, she said something about, um, uh, well, yeah, she's the one who sent me to McCool. So, um, and then there's this book, uh, Ancient Records by James Henry Breston. He opens this book and yeah, he's showing you um, uh, woodcuts of Roman statuary now. Uh, and she said uh, Essigol's in here as well. Uh, it's another mention, probably sourced from Herodotus. It's hard to tell. Um, anyway, yeah, no, uh, nothing modern I can tell. Uh, she did mention something about uh, she she remembered seeing something in a display or something like that. Um, she's supposed to get back to me. Um, she's she's the she's the classical. Uh, she's the 19th century uh, archaeology stuff. So much more modern. My my stuff's very old. What what's the significance of the statuary woodcuts? Ah, well, um, so. He says, uh, McCool's Ancient Records um, sourced one of the rooms called uh, the Hall of Mystery. This all sounds very spooky. It's not, I assure you. Uh, the mystery cults were the secretive cults that kind of hid their religious uh, uh, devotion. Uh, they usually had uh, uh, churches concealed in other areas. One of the halls that they uncovered uh, uh, by uh, Breasted himself recovered had 16 statues one of them was marked with your uh cuneiform uh markings so uh s o gol one so points at a statue that uh has been damaged um it has no hands it has no head uh it's it's a it's a male statue um it was obviously um smashed Does the I mean in in the the illustration so the I Kevin, guess does the, in the books that he found? Oh. Sorry, Kevin, what were you saying? Uh, say, so the spelling in the books that he found does it match what was found on the bodies, or did it take him a while to figure it out because it was misspelled on the bodies? He says it was slightly misspelled, but I'd be deeply surprised just you know because the cuneiform matches. The translations have changed over the years, so when you deal with breasted, there isn't the extra syllable here, but that, that's a modern contrivance. Uh, so he's so giving you... If you think of the actual cuneiform, it's just the, the transliteration. That's yeah, the, the transliteration has changed. So Akkadian, uh, verbal Akkadian, has, has changed significantly in the last 25 years. Uh, it's, it's one of my areas of study. So it's not unusual for Breasted to refer to it in a slightly antiquated manner. Um, we still believe what we're saying now is much closer to what they were saying, but the spelling of the cuneiform is identical. All right. So, if uh, Fisher carved this in on his own body, then wait, what? Or if oh, I thought that was a I thought that was a public thing. Speaking out of character, never mind. No. All right, well, all right. No, no, uh, then I may have just been sort of mulling that out loud then, and say, and I'll say okay. it's <laughs> hypothetical, but uh, we're still. No, we're still we're still uh, still investigating that. Anyway, whoever made the carving learned learned the uh, learned the symbols recently. Then, right? That's a since there that's a recent uh, version of uh, of your understanding. I guess no, no, you, you've okay. misunderstood me. Uh, the cuneiform is unchanged. The the pronunciation of Akkadian has changed for us. How we pronounce okay. it now? Yeah. 
Yes, yeah, so, so but but the symbols themselves are identical, this, which is how I found this. Um, if you look at the cuneiform from your your uh, victim, mm-hmm. I guess his chest is identical to this cuneiform. The way we pronounce Akkadian okay. has okay. changed. I That's see. All. I see. All right. Um, so the, it, it, does the location of the Esogul statue in the Hall of Mystery, I mean, can we see, does, the, does its location signify anything in particular? Like the way it's positioned in, yeah. in, in relation to the other statues, the other gods? No, no I mean, um, but, but he gives you a basic breakdown of the stuff. So Rested and those discovered the one of the the mystery cults hall of mysteries. There there are a lot of them, but one was discovered outside of London in the 1920s. Um, it, it's a, it's a classical site of antiquity. It was dug up. It was excavated. Uh, these statues now live in the British Museum. Um, it, it's a well known site. It is it is not at all obscure. It, it is considered a significant find in England of Roman era architecture and statuary. It's a big deal. (laughs) (laughs) They are swearing at someone. They totally are. They're like, fuck you, I'm gonna kill you. (laughs) Unfortunately, it's to everybody who comes anywhere near, including Shane, who they have known for years. They don't like Shane? No, they, they like me just fine. Work. They just bark like crazy anytime somebody comes to the door. <laughs> but we don't have any unwanted guests. Yeah. Well, okay, so if, we, if we're, I'm asking what's uh, the, the uh, Tomasino. So if we want to know more mm-hmm. about about Esso Gull and, and the, his mystery cult, where would we start? Are there are there res- are there sources out there that would uh, that would tell us anything uh, more? Man, uh, you know, for every you know Jesus, for every for every Muhammad, there's a thousand and four wannabe gods that turn up and vanish. You know, and the mystery cults were that they were literally secret gods, hundreds of them. So. I mean, the best I could say is probably the British Museum, maybe. But, you know, if anybody has tracked down where that statue, what it means, or, I mean, it's in their collection, it's on display. So uh, it, 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 it would likely be them. I mean, besides that, you know, University of Pennsylvania would be the only other place I could think of. The archaeology, anthropology department there is quite good. Um, and it, there, there's a specialty towards uh, obscure religions and such. Uh, they have um, the largest uh, Cadian cuneiform collection in North America. Bigger, bigger than us. All right. Um, are there uh, so so? Are there are there dictionaries with these with the with cuneiform symbols out there? You know what? Uh, which, which? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he he goes and he he has a Genovese bag. Uh, Genovese is the the drugstore. Uh, locally, not the crime family, notably. Um, uh, and he, he dumps a bunch of smaller books in it and says, you know, I can always get more of these. Here, here you go. Um, so he, you're looking at um, uh, McCool's uh, uh, cuneiform, which is uh, a book summarizing cuneiform markings from 1922. Uh, and he says, that, that's pretty good source. Um you know, transliteration, translation becomes difficult because uh, there's multiple meanings depending on where iconology is placed in uh, the sentence structure, and the sentence structure is not standard English. So, you know, you'll be able to pick words out, but you're going to have a hard time translating it. Uh, you should just bring it back here if you get anything like right. this. This is actually pretty exciting. We don't usually get stuff sure. like this. Sure. So. Um, okay, so we've got McCool's. Are there books like that that are still, like dic- cuneiform dictionaries that are publicly available, that are readily available? Are they in every uh, library, so you're trying every to, bookstore? You're trying to catch you're trying to catch the guy. Based, that's neat. Okay, so he, he walks over and he, he's got a big smile on his face. He's thinking, he's saying like, uh, no. I mean, like, I mean, if, I, if, I, if, you want, if you want this, 
it's pretty specialized. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if you want the, if you want this book, you know, you're not going to go down to Walden Books and find it. So if I'm curious about cuneiform, and I'm just uh, you know, I'm 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 a I'm a total newcomer to it. Where do yeah. I start? Uh, New York Public Library, uh, any of the larger branches, uh, probably have McCool's, probably have some Breasted's work, maybe. Uh, New York Public Library will definitely have it. Like the, the main branch, Manhattan, they'll, they'll have it. Uh, maybe Columbia University. Uh, you know, it depends. Um, it's a specialty text. It'd be like... Um, Walk into a, a bookstore and ask them if they have a 1982 Oldsmobile transmission repair book in stock. Yeah. It's, not, it's not something people commonly want. And same, by the same token, what, you know, how, 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 uh, how readily available are the texts that are going to mention S. O. Ghoul to begin with? No. Uh, you know, if the, if the basic dictionary is like an 80... You know, 82 Oldsmobile Transmission Repair Guide. This is like a, you know, a Great Ghost 1921 Transmission Repair Guide. It's 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 super rare. Nobody's gonna have it. Uh, collectors oh. maybe, or you know, um, I I I had to ask for the book, and this is what I do for a living. Well, uh, let, help help me make a list. Like, who comes to mind? That uh, who's what collections okay. come to mind that are going to have books that mention this this mystery cult? Okay, so he writes down a bunch of a bunch of stuff. It involves it's mostly the American Museum of Natural History itself, uh, University of Pennsylvania, Columbia University, the New York Public Library Manhattan branch, the London Museum, uh, British Museum, um, uh, and then you know he waves his hands a lot. Uh, when discussing uh, the Chicago Field Museum and a couple other places, where he's like, maybe they don't they don't usually do a focus on early uh, written language. So, you know, I know people there. They don't they don't do anything. There are any private collections that you know about that would that would uh, have it? Huh. Hmm. You'd want to talk to probably one of the uh, chairpersons, not me. I, I mean, that's above my pay grade. I don't even get invited to the, the the dinner parties here, but the people who do pitch in lots of money, and there are a lot of them, you mm -hmm. know, um, they move in different circles. Okay. Me, I, I, I'm lucky to live uh, anywhere near the city. <laughs> sure. Kevin, you still with us? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Yep. I've been I've been going on and on. Uh, just that he mentioned that there was someone who um, knew the more modern. Yeah, Abigail. Um, into this. Yeah, she's a. Yeah, you, you guys can basically. Uh, no, it, it's no problem. Once you guys uh, stop talking about this stuff, he drags you down to the um, cafeteria, which is downstairs at the subway stop. There's a big open cafeteria that opens onto the subway, basically. Um, and he looks around for a little bit and then brings over a, a rather dire looking woman um, in, in a, uh, I wouldn't even call it a dress. Basically, she looks miserable. She comes over, sits down, and, and seems very, 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 very uptight talking to federal agents. Um, she introduces herself as Abigail. Uh, and, and, you know, poor Tomasino is like, this is awesome. And she's just like, <laughs> she's not yeah. into it. So, so she says, um, she's in charge of, uh, 19th and 20th century Americana and antiquities for the museum. Uh, and that she has worked, uh, in specialist book collections for the occult before. Aha. That's right. So, Anyway, um, he gets her to divulge the Esso Goal thing and how she knew it, and she basically, the gist of it is she read, she read a lot of uh, 18th, 19th, and 20th century occult literature. She recognized the Esso Goal name from the mystery cults when he mentioned it to her. Um, she doesn't believe in any of this garbage. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, she just finds it very interesting as an insight into human nature, and she could get in a lot of trouble if the museum thought she was doing this instead of doing her job. Well, they won't. They won't find out anything uh, anything about it from us that you don't want them to. Did uh, this this mis this Esso Gull mystery cult? Did it is is it known by any other names? Um. Well, she says you know it. It depends on how you pronounce it, right? right? So, she. She, she is looking up at, at Tomasino when she's saying this. This is obviously his department. But she says, you know, the standard god name would have two other characters to it. It's almost like a rhyme. And this is missing two characters. So we're not hearing the full name. But that, that again, with mystery cults is not at all unusual. Usually we find the statuary destroyed or or the words struck out or things like this. What is unusual is finding Roman statuary with a cuneiform marking on it. We, we only have uh, uh, six or seven exemplars like that. What are the other ones? So, uh, uh, again, Span uh, Spanish Roman locations with mystery cults. Okay. Very similar. Um, you have to understand a lot of these were smuggled out of the Middle East and spread all over Europe. Um, and, and this happened all the way up until the, 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 the uh, near the end of the Roman Empire. Um, and it, it became very popular. And when Christianity started to kind of swarm, um, they all went underground. And some of them lasted much later than that. She seems to be opening up a bit about that. She seems she she obviously likes this subject. Well, can you tell me what uh, what were some of the what were some of the sources that you read that you uh, that you've seen seen this particular cult mentioned in? Okay, so she she lists all the books that he's already kind of listed mm -hmm. to you. Uh, you get the feeling she's the one who gave him several of those books, um, and then she says that. Um, there's a book on display uh, that she has looked at. Um, it's it's a it's a book without a title. Um, it's at a place called the Groliers Club, uh, and the Groliers Club doesn't mean anything to you, um, but she explains it very briefly as a history. It's it's a book club that deals with the history of printing and collects specialty items in the history of printing. It's open uh, to the public in a restricted manner. You have to pay for a ticket. You can go inside and look at the display. She describes this all to you. It's basically a brownstone that was owned by a person and is now a museum. Mm -hmm. So she says this is a, it's a nameless book. Um, it has the name in the book uh, as one of the named cults. Um, and uh, this book again. Uh, this is this the, the book at the Grolier Club. We don't really know how old it is. It's it, it the reason it's up on display is they think it was printed with human blood. Um, it's a specialty item, uh, and the collectors are really printed, into that. not a manuscript. Yeah, it's, it's printed, so it's you know 16th century, 17th century would be the estimate. Um, it's a small hand bound. In the modern style, it's it's not a quarto or a, a folio fold. It could have been rebound. So she gives you the address of the Grolier Club, um, and uh, she says uh, the secretary uh, is a man named uh, Joshua Palma, P A L M A, uh, and that he knows her, and, and I, I'm sure he'd want to talk to you if you have any questions. All right. Did we get Abigail's last name? You mentioned... Uh, White. Okay. Well, so I guess my other, uh, only other question is, has are you aware of anyone else that's taken an interest in S. O. Ghoul? Well, I mean... You mentioned 20th century books. What, in what context? Uh, well... Period or modern occult books? 
you know, the kind of stuff you'd find at the Warlock shop or like, Yeah, you know, I mean I mean and this is this is where I, I I disagree with a lot of the people I, I interact with on this information. Um, you know, there are book there are wicked book fairs and things like that and, and they'll reproduce these books and they'll have garbage names listed in the back. And and what's worse, they'll mix the garbage in themselves. They'll go look up a mystery cult and steal the name and just dump it in a book that's otherwise fictional. Uh, because these spiritualist books now are really popular. I mean, you have a president who's getting his palm read, right? Um, so you can make a lot of money doing this stuff. So uh, the Esso Gold thing, I mean, the, the way I recognized it, it was it, it, it was in a list of demons in a book called the Necronomicon, um, which is a, it's a paperback. It's a, it's a thing you can buy. Um, you can go to Walden Books and pick it up. Did, uh, yeah, so did the did this paperback have, characterize Esso Ghoul in any way? No, no, I mean, um, it, like I was saying, this is, this is uh, spiritualist garbage. It's not even a real right. book. It's, it's someone cutting together a half dozen different sources, drawing out fake sigils, and then writing a bunch of, you know, gibberish at the bottom. But to make it sound real... They, they grab a bunch of stuff from an Enlil tablet or, you know, an Anki carving, and they literally just drop it in. So the ethical thing uh, turned up in a summoning for something. It, it's junk. I mean, it, it's a book you can buy anywhere. It's, it's quite popular. I was selling that book in 1986. <laughs> All right. Do you have you have you so have you seen Esso Ghoul listed in the paperback Necronomicon? Yes. Yeah, that, that's where I initially recognized Do you name. remember what about what part uh, of the book it was in to save us the trouble of reading the whole thing? Uh, it's it's in a summons for some creature that started with a Y. All right. Uh, midway through the book, maybe. I, I, oh. I don't know. Um, it's just really important you realize that uh, this stuff is just sure. junk. It has nothing well, to do with you, it. Well, you, you know that and I know that, but... We're 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 trying to inv we're potentially investigating somebody who thinks otherwise, however mistaken he might be. Some people take this stuff very very seriously. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 you know I ha I hate seeing this stuff get out of hand. I mean, it's very fascinating when you look at it the right way, and it it offers uh, a, a wonderful insight into human nature. Well, I agree. So I agree. So she she's hopeful you guys uh, find your man and and basically wants to disengage. All mm -hmm. right. Well, I want to give her my card and ask her to uh, please okay. uh, you know please uh, please get in touch if uh, if anything else occurs to you related to any of this. And, mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank sure. her. Thank her profusely for her time. Okay, um, and Tignello and Green uh, at about nine o'clock in the morning. You're on the Nassau Expressway underpass uh, in Far Rockaway, Queens. Uh, Far Rockaway is, uh, I know, a slight, slightly beached community. There is beach on the edge. Um, but the inlet you guys are kind of entering is high reeds and a canal. So it's cut. Uh, it's filthy. There's crack files everywhere. Um, uh, you walk out to kind of where you think this stuff is. Uh, you see a bunch of abandoned bungalows on the far side of the canal. Um, and these bungalows are, are barely two stories. They're stone. They have, you know, squat pillars. They're all boarded up. Uh, they're all painted up. Um, you see a half dozen people uh, as you kind of move up under the expressway. They all move away from you with great speed. Those were clearly cops. Yes. Um, they're not paying attention to you, and you see, you know, kids' heads pop up every once in a while in the reeds, a uh, quarter mile away, watching you. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull out a twenty from my wallet and just hold it up in the air. Okay. Um, do you want to give me a persuade roll? Sure. Uh, what's that? Forty-seven. I have a forty. Okay. Um, so you, you hear very, very distant 
Fuck you, man. <laughs> and they kind of disappear. We'll call it. We just want to talk. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, you, you, you don't hear a lot. Um, you see kids on bikes. You see cars every once in a while. Um, you walk down to the edge of the canal. Uh, it's pretty obvious where the body was. Uh, portions of the ground have been cut up and kind of marked, but that was some time ago. Um, I actually want to try to get the attention of one of these kids. Okay. They'll, they'll talk to me more, over an adult. Sure. Um, so you're going to walk out in the street and start talking to them? Oh, yeah. I'm just going to say, hey, uh, okay. I just, you got a minute? I just so, want to talk to you. I'm going to do it in my very motherly voice. Okay. Give me a persuade. Okay. Oh, yeah, up here. There you go. Sweet. I've got a very motherly voice. Okay, so you end up talking to, um, it's hard to tell. You you know, you guess she's maybe 25. She's yeah. obviously homeless. Mm-hmm. She calls herself Miss Sasha. Mm-hmm. Uh, she doesn't have many teeth. She's cracked in. Uh, and, you know, she drifts over dragging a garbage bag. She's wearing flip-flops and hardly any clothing. And basically, you know, is doing the junky rock right. while, while you talk to her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's saying, you police officer? She says in a very kind of... I'm going to say, no, I'm not a police officer. No. What, what do you do, lady? Actually, do you... I, I, try to, I try to find out uh, how people meet their maker. That's all. Okay. That's all I'm doing. I got a couple of questions if you have a minute. Uh, a minute. Do you have any money? I do have. I got a little bit of money for you if you, you can help me out. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes. So, so she's scratching and nodding. Yeah. So, you know, you ever go down here by by the water over here? I know that they... Uh, oh, you're, you're talking about Reeves. Yeah, I am talking about Reed. Yeah, yeah they, they cut his head off. They did. You heard anything uh, odd or weird about that or anything unusual <laughs> besides <laughs> that? What do you uh, know about that? Well, I'm, I mean, he smoked He smoked rock with everybody, right? He, yeah. He, everybody knew him. He was, he was a funny, funny little white boy. Yeah. So uh, he, he, he used to come down here, and then, then he wasn't. He wasn't so liked, right? Like, then the buds didn't want him around here anymore. I don't know. Maybe they cut him up. You think that's what happened? Is that what you've been hearing? Mm, people don't talk about stuff like this. No? Nobody's ever talked about anything weird or crazy or seeing anything? No, but I saw, I, saw that, I, saw, I saw that there was another one in the park, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, he, was, he was crazy, too. We knew him, too. When you say crazy, what do you mean he was crazy? Oh, he just smoked and smoked and smoked. Some people don't know when to stop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> clearly. Yeah, yeah. So you think that uh, that might have gotten in, gotten him into a bit of trouble then? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, unusual way to, you know, kill somebody though, don't you think? Like cut uh, off their heads and stuff. That's weird. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's yeah. not nice. It's not nice down here. It's not a place for people like you. It's not nice. Well, I don't think it's a it's a place for anybody that you know doesn't want to get their head cut off. For one, <laughs> so she lets out a horrible cackle. <laughs> uh, so that's all. That's all you got. You hadn't heard or ever seen anything different. Well, she, usually, she does, does this kind of lazily pointing kind of thing, and she says, "You know, I, this is this whole place at night, Seagirt. This whole avenue is mm-hmm. filled with cars, right? Crack." Right. You know, they're running crack every night, 24-7. But, I mean, you're here in the day. They're all crashed out. They're all smoked up. They're all, you know, he, she points across the way. She goes, there's crack houses, all those old houses. There are people all stacked out in those houses right now. I don't know shit. I don't have any crack money right now. I can't go in there. Mm. They kill you. They just kill you. Hmm. Well... All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you uh, twenty dollars for your time. I really okay. She snatches the money from you, um, and she starts kind of strutting up the block of Seagirt Avenue. Um, you think of anything, you give me a holler up here. Uh, okay. So she, she, va- she vanishes, um, and you know the kids are 
the kids on the bikes are, you know, 13 and 14 years old. They they don't look armed, but you know, it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're black males. They they seem interested in uh, you, Tig, in particular. Mm -hmm. um, so they you know they ride over and you, you get a couple kids talking. Mm -hmm. They won't give names. Um, they say they live in the neighborhood. They want to know what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, they want they're obsessed with like the idea you have a gun that you're a cop mm -hmm. uh, you know they're saying shit like that they're kind of trying to goad you on yeah i don't uh you know i'm i'm just looking for uh figure out what's what's going on around here just like uh you know if you've seen anything anything unusual otherwise i you know don't waste my time and he goes uh what does he do points at uh green <laughs> He doesn't, he doesn't do much. <laughs> he walks okay. around with me. That's about they, what he does. They both laugh and clap. Mm -hmm. you know, you're mocking your partner. They think that's hysterical. Mm -hmm. um, so the kids, uh, these two kids, you, do, you definitely don't get the feeling they're involved in direct drug dealing. You get the feeling they're neighborhood kids. Mm -hmm. They're you know 12 and 13. They're on the edge of entering into that lifestyle. Right. But they, basically one says that, well... You know, Reeves used to hang out down at the disaster house, and he points all the, he says, follow the highway up to where the water kind of cuts, and you'll see it's one of those bungalows. It's the, all painted. Disaster, the disaster house? Yeah, disaster house. It's all painted up. You, you can't miss it. And, and you know, you don't want to fuck around there because uh, the UBN used to run that place. They don't run it no more. Hmm. So just be careful because you're going to deal with the UBN and whoever the fuck else is running it now. Right. Yeah, well, probably some good advice. So you haven't heard any any stories about what's been going on out here? Any, nothing? Uh, Reeves, Reeves is, he's, he's a cracked up white boy. I mean, he's dead, right? Who cares? Yeah. All right. So, so he's, and, and um, one of the boys is, is, you know, intimating you should adopt him. <laughs> now, you should take him away from all this and they go live in uh, Cop Town and, mm -hmm. you know, where no one gets shot every night. And, you know, he's making up a big story and leaning over his handlebars. And oh, also Cop Town. The, the other kid is like, you yeah, know, let's just... It's like, come on, let's go. Well, yeah, I'm not sad. Believe it or not, I grew up in a place not too different from this. You can... You can find a different way. <laughs> yeah. They ride off. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll thank them, and then um, I, I, don't know, I don't know if I want to go over to the UB. Okay, you it's know, 9 in the morning. I don't think it's going to be super active. I think we should go. Yeah, we can check it out anyway. Okay. All right. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, so, yeah. It's going on like 10 uh, when you guys march through the weeds up north. So it's not where the body was. It's not where Reeves' body was found. Right. It's, up, it's up the canal a bit. It's still under the elevated uh, Nassau Expressway. Mm -hmm. So basically you have a four-lane highway hanging above your head. You can hear the cars droning. It's about, that's about 80 feet above you. There's all these reeds and dirt and shit. And then... There's a footpath that leads to a, a wooden drop bridge that goes across the canal. Uh, and the wooden drop bridge is fucking ancient. It looks like, you know, it could snap, basically. Uh, but it's obviously well, well used. Um, and uh, at the edge of the bridge, um, you see two kids. Uh, they immediately hop up when they notice you guys come out of the reeds. Uh, and one um, who's older, maybe 17. Um, he's decked out in all this kind of expensive looking gear. Uh, his hand drifts to his butt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, hang on. And he goes, who the fuck are you? We're just, I'm just here looking for some information. I'm not a cop or anything. Just, uh, you know, that Reeves guy. Ah, uh, fuck. Okay. So there's, they're both looking at the ground and looking around, trying not to look at you. 
um, so that they go, you know, this guy goes, he goes, so he's the cop and you're not the cop. You, you fucking reporter. You're the, no, 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 nothing like that. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what happened to this, this dude. I cut his fucking head off. I don't know all these questions. They just cut his head off. Who cares? Fucking crackhead. We'd like to keep him from cutting anybody else's head off. Yeah. So you, you, you is a cop. He says no. no. I'm not NYPD. No, we're just trying to figure out, you know, who has a reason to... That seems like an awful, you know, extreme thing to do, don't you think? Cut some crackhead's head off. You, oh, ain't, ne- you ain't never talked to Reeves for very long, have you? <laughs> you are you saying you wanted to cut his head off? I'm saying anybody who spent more than 15 minutes with the dude and want to cut his head off they wouldn't <laughs> fucking shut up. What did he go on about? Uh, you know, standard white boy problems. Got to steal my mom's TV. Got to steal my mom's car. Anybody want to buy my mom's shirts? Who the fuck wants to buy my mom? You know, he's standard crackhead shit. Yeah, I can see how that would get annoying. Yeah. So, did he ever talk any crazy shit about anything, or just on and on? So he he says, he's he's like, okay, you're not, you're not cops. What? No. What are you? What are you doing here? He's getting upset now. No, I'm. uh, You know what I honestly what I do is I look at dead people. I do autopsies. (laughs) Okay, his eyes go wide. Uh, two crackheads suddenly appear out of the reeds um, behind you. They oh, see, God. yeah, they see this guy, um, this this kid standing at the wood, and the kid goes. He rubs his nose and goes, <laughs> sends him back, and they, they turn around and go back. What's um, that about? What's going on there? Hey, Look, goes, man, we don't care about your crack dealing. We're not here for that. Yeah, we don't care about that. And he goes, okay, what do you, what do you want to happen here? We he just want to know... What, if he knew, like he's trying to be reasonable. Yeah, let's be reasonable. <laughs> we just want to know if you knew anything about this guy, Reeves, anything about what happened to him, if anybody saw anything. We don't... I mean, it's, it's not it's, just it's, the it's, guy who got, who got shot, right? I mean, this guy who uh, uh, hasn't even turned up yet. We're just trying to figure it out. Okay, he, he scratches his head and, and steps aside, and you see the second kid is holding a Mac-10. Um, and, and he says, I, I got to go make a phone call. You stay here. Okay. Cool. So he trots off into the brush, uh, and the kid with the Mac-10 is maybe 15, um, and he's holding it in a very casual, arms-down kind of way. Um, and he's watching you very carefully. Uh, after about 25 minutes, that kid comes back, uh, and he says, uh, yo, 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 you can go across, you can fuck that place up all you want. He points at the, there's a a bungalow, maybe 80 yards from you across the canal. And and he goes, you do whatever you want there, just fucking bust that shit up. Okay? What's up there? This is, listen. You asked me for my help, right? Yeah. My help. It's a fucking crack house. They're the right. ones who dealt with your, your dead white boy. So go go deal with them, and it's we're, we're done here. It's a good deal, right? I'm not a fucking snitch. Right. I'm not going to tell you any more about it. You go clean that place up, and you'll have my, like, fucking eternal gratitude. Do either of these guys, are they wearing anything specific, any kind of gang sign that we can see or anything? Yeah, they're, they're all wearing reds. Lots of red. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, then right. that's cool. We're cool. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Shit. So he his, he does this kind of thing, and the kid with the Mac Ten tucks it in his pants, improbably, mm-hmm. uh, and they they march out in the weeds. All right. Look, I see who's the new owners. Yeah. All right. So we'll head over the rickety bridge carefully. I'm hobbling across. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, you take it very slow. I'm assuming. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, you're looking at the Disaster House. Uh, the Disaster House is, it was once four individual bungalows on a beach, uh, the canal. Um, but you can tell just by the way the roof has collapsed in the center that it's likely the, the walls are down or something like that. 
most of the windows were boarded up. Um, you, uh, some of them have been peeled clean. There are buckets and stuff, and you could smell shit from here. Um, so, uh, it's a bright, sunny, warm day. Yeah, nobody's hanging around outside, or no, no, there's, there's no movement that we can see at all. And nope, the door is wide open. There's a bunch of windows pried open. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna, I want to circle around the, the whole complex or whatever and just sort of get a feel for. Okay. Like if there's other openings, other doors, other windows. Yeah, I mean each unit has its own door. They're all connected. So imagine, you know, a small house, a cottage-sized house, smacked onto the butt of another cottage-sized house, smacked onto the side of two others. Mm-hmm. So it's literally four, four, door, 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 door. Um, but you get the feeling they're all connected, and every door is wide open, opening on black. There's no, there's no electric lights. There's no light. There's no sound. No. Well, wanna walk up there? Yeah, I mean, we'll go up one of the other doors, not the front when we came up to, but... Okay, let me just roll something. Hang on. Sure. Okay. Your dice are ominously red. Yes, I made them that way. Um, <laughs> so, so you step up the old stone steps, uh, guns out or what? Um, yeah, I'm going to have my gun out. Okay. I'm kind of holding it down, kind of moving quiet, quietly as I can. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you um, you guys enter uh, a low, dark room, which was probably a dining room, living room, at one point in the 1920s or the 1930s. The wood floor is bowed in. There's garbage all over the place. And you smell a very distinctive, um, thick, really, really, really fucking disgusting human stink. Uh, like shit. Buckets of shit probably would be your guess. Um, and you realize that the room you initially at a glance thought was empty actually has half a dozen people in it. Are they uh, asleep on the floor or something? They're all bundled up in, in little kind of piles on the floor. Um, and they all start to kind of slowly get up. Hmm. Uh, so you're not even really in the door both guns are out, um, and these guys get up and start turning around. You're looking at people who look slightly worse off than Mrs. Sasha. Yeah. Um, they're bug-eyed, and they look like they haven't eaten properly in weeks. Um, and they're all, you know, several of them are obviously, you know, fucking out of their minds on crack, even right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so... They all kind of turn towards the door listlessly. You hear movement elsewhere in the house now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, hey, I don't, we're not here to make any trouble. I just, you know, i got a couple of questions I want to ask about. Uh, huh? I don't, good. I don't think these guys are going to give us anything. No, I don't. I, don't, I just don't want any submits. Does anybody uh, here know anything about uh, Reeves? I believe Brian Reeves used to live here. Anybody know him? Uh, so you, um, one of them speaks very clearly Mm -hmm. here. Uh, he says he, he has a bedroom in the back. He has a bedroom in the back. Yep. Uh, okay. When's the last time you saw him? Uh, you get confused glances. (laughs) Okay. Uh, you want to go check in hey yeah, you're gonna, you, Kev, you gonna go make a call? Yeah. Okay. okay. See you next time, man. Um, so uh, all these guys here look like they're using heavily, and they're all I'm too far away. Well, but this one guy said he was speaking clearly. Yeah. Um, yeah. He sounded. No problem, Kevin. He sounded strangely coherent. This guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he, he looks just as rough as the others. Yeah, they all they all, you know, are eighty or ninety pounds soaking wet. Mm-hmm. They're all ribs. He, he's the one, but he's speaking clearly. Yeah, that, but, that uh, catches me off guard a little bit. Yeah, I mean you're looking at a I mean, to be clear, these people are nothing but shadows with eyes. Right. Mm-hmm. Um there's no light in here. There's so it's 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 a and it, and it stinks to high heaven. 
Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask this guy, you know, so you know Reeves. You talk to him much? Oh. He, he looks around and recovers a, um, a lighter from a table and starts smoking up with his back to you and says, sometimes. You don't know anything about what happened to him, do you? Why don't you go talk to him yourself? Points at the door. Well, if you don't mind, we'd like to do that. Okay. So he sits back down in a kind of Indian style with his back to you and continues smoking, rocking back and forth on the ground. I'm keeping my gun out. Sure. <laughs> we'll, we'll move in through these uh, specters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, you're in a long hallway that used to end in a wall, which is gone. And you see a duplicate hallway fade off into the black on the far end. You're looking at the mirror image of the other other cottage. Mm -hmm. um, and this hallway has piles of clothing that, you know, some of them are not clothing. Some of them are people curled on the ground. Uh, you would guess maybe there's 30 or 40 people in this place, maybe, maybe more. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's obvious buckets of shit and piss all over the place here in this hallway. I mean, it's cripplingly bad. You can't even see straight. Mm. Um, so. Got one hand on my gun. I probably have my arm up, you know. Okay. Trying to make it through without. Okay. Hearing. And I'm used to some pretty bad smells. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, you've smelled everything that's come out of a person. Yeah. Just not in this concentration <laughs> before. Um, T Tig so, might be carrying around a little uh, thing of vapor rub to put under her nose for autopsies that would yeah, not serve exactly. the purpose. That's a good idea. Exactly. Um, so, uh, alertness rolls, please. Okay. I'll, I'll you do I'll yours first. Okay. I'm not. Uh, I that's, a, that. that's a fail. That's, that's a fail. fail. All right, mine. That's a success. In fact, that's a, a crit. Nice. Okay, so uh, you, uh, Green, you're at the, you're kind of in the lead. You hear um, someone talking up the hallway, mm -hmm. and it's very um, matter of fact and very um, calm. Or yeah, it's very quiet. It's not it's not a shout or anything like that, um, and. You realize very quickly thereafter, um, yeah, take, take your experience check. Yeah. Um, uh, you realize it's not English. Uh huh. Um, so, I mean, there's a couple ways we can handle this. If you want to stop and try and listen to it, uh, I don't actually. I want to okay. keep going to, to the source of it, like wherever, whoever sits talking. Okay. Okay, so. At the end of this kind of destroyed hallway, both hallways turn to the right to what you're guessing is a, a central room, uh, but the wall is gone. So it's a, it's a much bigger hallway. You have to step over this kind of ruined wall. Mm -hmm. And when you turn, uh, what you see is, uh, you're guessing it's a, maybe a 14 or 15 year old kid who's whipped in, uh, kneeling in front of a bucket uh, and he was speaking right before you turned the corner. And when you turn the corner, he stops speaking and looks up and something in the bucket moves. Like an animal or something? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. I'll have my gun pointed at the kid and I'll just say, yeah. just step away from that. Okay. He, he stands up. Uh, and when he stands up, uh, you realize that you can kind of see clearly because there's a hole in the roof. When he steps forward, um, he has pustules all over his hands. Mm -hmm. And as the light touches his face, you see he has huge sores up and down the side of his face. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of his eyes is gray and pale, like it's kind of dead. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he smiles and doesn't have a lot of teeth. Uh, and he starts walking towards you. All right, I've got my gun up on him, and I'll just yeah, say, don't get any closer. 
Okay. Uh, two more alertness rolls, please. Okay. No yours. Yes. Okay. Nice. And uh, no. Okay. Um, so uh, here's what happens. Uh, Tig, you hear a commotion in the room you originally entered in. Mm-hmm. So you kind of this guy is approaching your partner, but you hear the equivalent of a bunch of chairs sliding aside or people standing up or something from the room you entered in, uh, which maybe had 11 or 12 people in it. Uh Uh, But this other kid is walking towards green. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to be like, we need to get the hell out of here. Yeah. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to (laughs) start backing away. You know, the way we came, my gun kind of looking behind me. Okay. Getting out if I can. Okay, so what's what's the rules of engagement here? Are you going to shoot these guys? Uh, try not to. I'm a, yeah, unless they're getting close, I'm going to tell them, you know, stop where you are, we're leaving, but stop where you are, we're going to shoot you. Okay. Okay, so um, here's what happens. Uh, the kid is approaching Green. Green starts backing up. Mm-hmm. Tiganello turns and begins backing up the hallway with the gun drawn. Um, so you have your gun, uh, beaded on the far entrance when, uh, a shape enters the hallway. It's nothing but a black outline of a person. Um, and, uh, when they touch the wall, the walls are this kind of a uh, lost in gray shadow. But when they touch the wall, you see it leave black marks all along the wall in kind of a dragging position. And then it's followed by a second figure stumbles in and smashes into the wall in a very similar manner. And then two others are struggling through the door frame. So there's almost four in the hallway now. These don't look like the skinny crackheads. Yeah. They do? They, they do, but, I mean, those four shoved into that hallway have very effectively blocked most of the light coming from the door. Um, so what you're seeing is shadows, occasional teeth, and some eyes every once in a while. So uh, I'm looking the other way at the other kid. Is he still yeah. acting on me? If, if you had to guess what, if you had to describe what he's doing, it looks like he's trying to hug you. Okay, no, I'm going <laughs> to try to avoid that. Um, okay. What I want to do is like try to sidestep him and like kick his leg out from under him or something so he goes down, and we want to run. I'm going to call out to Tig and say, follow me. And we're okay. Past him. Okay, so uh, we will enter combat. Let me just do this. Hang on. This is a bad idea. Disaster. This is a terrible idea. It's got it right there's a name. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just name this guy. Hang on. And I will add him. This is how we do turns, so you should be able to see him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... The order. Okay, let me, uh, so Alton's not here. Killian's not here. Crackhead goes first. Fuck. <clears throat> What's my firearm skill? <laughs> my self firearm skill as well. I hadn't done that in my past. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to balance a character. Let me, let me. Yeah, find. it is. There we go. Grapple. I'd like to attempt to dodge that. Well, okay. You, you could use your, you um, could do the fight back option if you're trying to just like trip him and knock him down using unarmed combat. Yeah. So he's going to attack and you can, you can roll against if that. That's better than okay. dodging. Okay. Yeah, he misses. Okay, so he's, he's going for me and misses. Okay, yeah. I'm going to respond by trying to do the trip on him. Okay. What are you rolling? Oh, sorry, I'm going to uh, Unarmed combat, right? Yep. Yeah, I agree. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so he goes down. You basically kick his leg out from under him, and he falls. Yeah. Um, and Tig, you're up. Uh, you, you basically what happens is Green. Uh, oh, sorry, is it Green? Yeah. Uh, Green steps into the room. This kid goes down. You hear people moving up the hallway behind you. Um, 
What are you doing? Yeah, you've told me to follow you. So yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm going after him. Okay. Did you see a way out? Well, I'm just going to run that other way. Okay. I know there's nobody there okay. right now. Okay. So, so the, the other, uh, yeah, uh, can you give me the, uh, Green, can you give me the alertness roll? Yeah. Uh, just missed it. Okay, the bucket is on, it, it's tipped on its side. There's black liquid all over the ground. Okay, well, I'll try not to step in it. It's shit, clearly. Yeah, it is shit. Um, <laughs> okay, okay, so this kid is on the ground rolling around. Uh, he doesn't look like he'll be recovered anytime soon. You guys step midway through the room, um, and here it goes. So uh, I'm going to make a, a roll, and 50 or higher, it's going to be TIG. Sorry, T. Um, okay, something moves in the room. Uh, it's not the kid. The kid is holding still, wheezing on the ground, and you hear something skitter across the wood of the room. Uh, you can't see anything. Uh, and let me just do this. <laughs> <laughs> what shall we name it? <laughs> Head so. Bang. In all caps. All right. Bang. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Tig, yeah. I think you get an action okay. before, before it goes. I'm terrified at this point. I'm going to shoot at it. Okay. Um, you're going to need to make a uh, alertness roll to even see it. Okay. Can't, we can't see that. Well, here, I can move this. Okay. Oh, it's a 74. No, you, you can't see it. Yeah, no, okay. All so right. basically, you have a general gist of the area it's in, uh -huh. you think, but you yeah. can't see anything. Uh, the crackhead is still recover. Okay, Agent Green, and then we'll go to the thing. Okay. Sorry, Tig. Mm. Uh, this is an attack um, that I'll, I will describe afterwards. Yeah. Okay. So I missed my initial. Oh, oh that's not good. Or it's or it's uh, really good if it's got a bad uh, skill. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, uh, Green. Did you get a chance to go? You got to go. No, right? I said I, I said I've missed my initial awareness roll of this, so I don't know that here the thing skidding around in the room, right? No, you don't. Uh, right. But you, you you did notice the bucket is tipped over. Yeah, so I'm just going to try to hobble past the crackhead and avoid okay. the shit to get to the far side of the room. Okay. Uh, Tig, something moves up your back. <laughs> can, she, can she try to um, can she try to dodge or anything like that? No, because um, she didn't know it was coming. Well, I mean, he, he, you didn't even see it. Right. So basically, if you want, if you want the description of the feeling, it would be um, uh, a rhesus monkey tries to climb up your back oh. uh, suddenly and it grabs onto your, you know, your, your clothing and pulls itself up. Okay, yeah, I'm screaming. Okay, uh, so you're gonna shriek. Uh, okay, all hell's gonna break loose right now. So. I'm going to use the restroom and I'll be back. You guys might want to plot a little bit. Yeah. Is it reasonable that we would have a flashlight on us or no? I think a flashlight, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you, you figured yeah. you were going to be going into weird places and maybe crack houses, right? So. That's what I thought. We have yeah. a flashlight. Yeah. So I can flick that on and try to see what's going on. Uh, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately no, you didn't bring those any either one of those shotguns that I was so careful to buy this morning. No. I know. Yeah. I know. So we don't see an exit out of this room, though, do we? Well, it's the mirror image, so I'm assuming the other side, there's corridor. There's another hall over there. If we can get like to the, the front right door of one of the other bungalows. <laughs> yeah, there's four identical bungalows mm -hmm. all backed up to each other. So if we get across this central room, mm -hmm. we'll go out the other side of the other one. Yeah, I definitely, you know, my my instinct is to get my back sure, up against the, the wall ball. or something. Yeah, but everything will be uh, better if you're in daylight. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, or it might not be better it. enough, but better. Yeah. No, but it'll better. be it's better than on me in the dark. <laughs> Sorry, I agree. Whatever it is, it's not as bad as what I'm imagining. 
Oh, well, I don't know about that. Yeah, it's probably it might true. be as bad. As it might be as bad as on the man. This wasn't. Uh, yeah, the disaster house should have been. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Clues in the name. The clues in the name. I just mean <laughs> Sorry. something like that. You want to trust yeah. the judgment of the crackhead community. They're the ones that know what they're talking about around here. Yeah. Okay. So luckily, whatever this thing was, skittered up your back, and and then you heard it very. You, you felt it leave your body and then hit the ground. Oh, so it jumped off of me. You yeah. You you heard it move up you know, felt it move up with this kind of tugging motion mm -hmm. where maybe it weighs two or three pounds tops. Okay. Um, it was like a rhesus monkey. Yes. Yeah, small, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. uh, Squirrel. <laughs> yeah. The, that was the thing. The crackhead is now standing, but can't attack. Uh, it, he starts to stumble around in the circle uh, to continue his hug fest. <laughs> uh, taking out you're up. Oh. You shriek. Oh. I'm running away. Okay, okay, so you and Green are running forward down the hall. Yeah, yeah. so basically my sense is that it, it's a, it should be a mirror image of where we came in, right? So yeah. Go straight across and we should come out a door on the other side at some point. Yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of your thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so uh, you, Tiganello and Green stumble up the hallway uh, and turn onto a living room identical to the other one on the opposite side. Uh, this one has different decorations. It's covered in cuneiform spray painted figures. Um, there are piles of shit and horrible stuff all over the room. Uh, there's a cooler filled with blue white looking flesh of some sort uh, oh. in the corner. Um, and when you step into the room, a half dozen figures stand up oh, um, and you notice the door here, which was open outside is now shut. You can see light right around kind of peeking around the edges. Um, are these things between us and that door? They're going to be very shortly. Um, I want to move towards that door and tell them to get out of our way. And if they actually move to get in front of the door, I will start shooting. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Is there a game of crack? Yeah. Okay, so um, let's move on. Take a little green. You're at. The, you're basically moving forward to the door. You're crossing a maybe thirty-five foot room. Um, several of the figures stand but don't move forward. Oh, One, so right a single sec. Uh, I asked Shane if he thought it was reasonable. You can tell me if you think it's reasonable that we would have had a flashlight on us. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to pull so it out. Get and... one out, flick, get the flashlight out and flick it on. So I can see okay. It. So you, um, you turn the flashlight on and you, it, it, this immediately deters a lot of them. Oh. Uh, they start moving back and kind of dodging. But the, in the center of the room, uh, there's an extremely large fellow who has stood up. Um, he's a white male. Um, he's grinning. He's all smiles. Mm -hmm. uh, he has uh, pus filled kind of infection down his cheeks on either side of his mouth. Uh, and he holds his hands up like this. Mm -hmm. And each hand is covered in huge, thick, pus filled marks. Um, and. Uh, he says in a, in, a, in a rather surprising British voice, he says, stay for the party. And he starts walking towards you. If he gets at all close to me, I'm going to shoot him. Okay. I'm, I'm running. <laughs> okay, so you're running back? No, no. No, so towards, no, towards, towards closed the door. closed door. Okay, so uh, here's what's going to happen. Tiganella is going to go for, oh, wait, no, i got to enter this. Hang on. What's his dex? He will just become the thing this time. Okay. Well, it's the crackhead. Thing two. Oh, so yeah, he will go first. Um, now, note, Tiganello, you can dodge or resist or anything like this. Doing all those things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he, he's going to roll. Um, 
Oh, oh. come on! <laughs> okay, so you want to roll your dodge? Yes. Ooh. What is that? What is oh, that? What is that? Ninety-three. What is it? Ninety-three. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, so he he basically goes like this. He stretches, and you hear as a as a medical professional, you hear what what you think are um, ligaments separating uh, oh. very very loudly. Oh, um, and when you go to cut around the right hand side of him at a distance of maybe four and a half feet, mm -hmm. he suddenly lunges out and his arm is about a half foot too long. Um, and he grabs you. Uh, now, that's not the bad part about it. You're going to have to give me a sand roll. Pretty, that's pretty bad. Yeah. Not the bad part. That's the bad part. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> 33, 34. You're going the wrong direction. Four sand points. Um, he, his hand it is just not right at all. Uh, and it makes contact with your bare skin. And, and when, it, when it does, every postule in it splits. Uh, and a uh, smell of um, just a long infected wound kind of spills down your body. You can feel it running down the side of your shirt. Uh, and uh, he's grabbing onto you and laughing like this is all just great fun. Um, and he rolled a seven. So uh, the second hand grabs onto your arm uh, and he picks you up like a rag doll. Uh, and then um, the last thing you see is him pulling you in towards his face. Oh! Um, and then there's a, a similar horrible squelching noise. Uh, Green, you're watching this. He literally lunges out and you see his arm literally jump a, a good half foot further than it should. Mm -hmm. And when he grabs and she struggles, his hand rolls back completely until it touches his forearm. Uh, but it doesn't lose grip. Uh, and then he just literally picks her up and does this. Ooh. And you see her screaming and freaking out and then her voice is just lost in horrible squelching noises. Uh, so you're going to have to give me another sand roll. Me or Tig? Tig. Tig. Uh, uh, you're going to have to give me a sand roll in a second because you're watching. But something. I lost four, right? Yeah, yeah, that's just from the grip. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there it is. Oh, oh my God. There's an extra 10 points you got. But, but I mean, I'm... Um, I am rightly horrified. These are well earned. Let's see. Uh, two sand. Okay. So uh, what happens is this bland, warm, disgusting, pus-like liquid is spilled up your nose and in your mouth. Oh, gross! Um, <laughs> more than two points. Uh, and uh, it's helplessness, notably. Uh, and... Uh, and you hear it ends with a wah, and then he just chucks you on the ground uh, with with a horrible kind of slam. You take one hit point damage, oh, God. Um, and uh, he turns towards Green and goes, "And you, <laughs> <laughs> and I shoot him." <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, so Tignello, you're on the ground. You take one hit point. You're fucking out of your mind. Yeah. Are you temporarily insane? Not actually insane. No. no. Okay, because you didn't lose more than five. Okay. Uh, green, give me your magic rolls. Okay, sanity first? Yep. Yeah, whatever. Nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, you don't lose anything. Just glad it's not him, apparently. That's true. Could be worse. It could be me. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, give me the attack roll. So, so does does he get plus twenty for being up close? Yep. I don't. I don't. I can't Move see that. that. Move that. Oh, there you go. Fifty-three. I got a sixty anyway, so it's good. Okay, so uh, you uh, you take your service weapon out and cluster several shots into this guy's chest. Roll the damage. 
I actually don't have any stats on my gun. It's, so. Oh, sorry. What, what, what kind it, of gun? It's is either it? it's either going to be a D10 for a nine millimeter or a D12 if you're carrying one of the old 357 revolvers and you have it with 357 shells. I mean, it's it's 86. I don't know. He's a vet. He. I don't know. Sure. Give him the, give him the, give him the, the magnum. Again, it's delta green. It doesn't really. Yeah. Matter. Eight. Okay. Eight. Nice. So uh, you go, blam, blam. <laughs> and uh, you see, you know, gaps in his chest that immediately kind of collapse. Um, so you see, you know, you see the hydro shock kind of go through him, and it's like someone takes a bucket of ink and throws it on the far wall. Black goop. Uh, and uh, he's grinning again. Um, so he's stumbling towards you. Um, it looked like it hurt him, maybe. It's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. uh, then we're back to the thing. So he's going to attack you, and you're going to roll resist or dodge or... Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, it's going to be a half-party kill today? Yeah, half-party kill. Uh, I'm going to try to dodge it. Okay. So that's a hit. So uh, give me your roll. Well, that thing nice. I can't even see it. Oh, what was it? Six. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So you you skip out of the way. Uh, oh, you hear God. you hear horrible shifting in his body. You hear pop popping that sounds like someone pulling on the neck of a chicken. Ugh. Um, and uh, it, it basically flopping its hands on the ground towards you, and you can see uh, it's leaving a trail of white you know, puff See. everywhere it's touching. Um, and he's grabbing for you in almost a playful manner. Like, come back here. Like, mm. come, come on. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm moving as quickly as I can to the door. Okay. Uh, you're, you're at the door this round, but Tiganello is on the ground still. Yeah. Uh, the wind was kind of knocked out of you. You can get up and run or do whatever you want. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to okay. get the hell out. Okay. So, Tignello, uh, give me, let's see, how would I do this? Give me an athletics roll, if you have it, or what? something like that. Do, do you have athletics? Uh, or? no. Okay, uh, just give me a con times three, then. Okay. So, oh, 44. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you stumble to your feet, you, you, you summon your inner track star, and uh, basically, I that's I do do yoga. That's one of my. Yeah. So so yeah. So this, um, I mean, basically, he dropped you on the ground and slammed the air out of you, and you rolled over and stumbled to your feet and taken off in kind of a runner stance. Mm -hmm. And now you slam into Green, who's at the door. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, Green, you're looking, you're you're trying to grab onto this slat of wood that is not really a door that's been kind of shoved into the space. Can I try to just bolster it, like, like shoulder into it? Kind of not yeah, yeah. If you want to give me a strength times three. Yeah, I'll try that. 42. Okay. Uh, it's kind of cocked, but I don't know what that is. Is it a six that's or a six? 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 That's a six. Yeah. Okay, so smash this entire, you splinter the rotted wood door, blow it open into uh, the sunlight that you forgot was out there. Um, and you stumble down the steps into high reeds, uh, and Tiganello's like right behind you, shrieking. Yes, um, I am. And uh, when you look back from the high reeds, you're looking maybe fifteen or twenty yards back through the reeds. You see the disaster house. It's just a black door. There's no one there, and uh, Tig, Tig, you're covered in goo. This horrible shit. I, I'm gonna. Is the water nearby? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm definitely running into the water and getting this shit off of me. Okay, so you basically you, your jacket's a loss. You yeah, just have to ditch it. It's, it's awesome. covered in pus. Yeah. And you're you're washing your hands, and you notice your hands are raw and red. Uh, your arm is raw and red. Your cheeks are raw and red. Uh, your nose feels wrong, like it's tingly and numb 
Okay. Um, and uh, you, you're you're kind of freaking out, and um, is- you're there just literally like yeah, um, crying under the underpass, and yeah. um, uh, while Green is kind of vaguely looking at the disaster house covering you, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, and sure. I, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up here. Sure. Um, <laughs> I named it the disaster house. That's my soul. That's my soul. So so things of note, this guy was white. Mm -hmm. British. He was was British. He was extremely overweight. Um, Like, uh, terminally obese. British. Um, Ginormous. And flexible. Extremely flexible. Like, disturbingly so. Um, like, I, I just have a very clear picture of him, you thinking, oh, I'm totally free and clear of his grab, and then him just extending another half foot uh, out of thin air. Um, so He's covered in pus-filled nodules and things, right? Yeah, yeah. Weeping yeah. source. Yeah. Uh-huh. Shane's just upset he wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> I could have fixed it. I could have killed it. the shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> true. We'll be back. We'll be back. Anyway, that that was fun. Uh, too bad Kev had to leave. Yeah. I know, but he's um, got a bad connection. Hopefully, oh, it's okay. These yeah. things, these things always start slow and then they speed up. Yeah, so, yeah. Anyway, cool. Do you want to play again next week? Yeah, yeah. We're cool. good on Wednesday. Yeah, definitely. Cool, because I'd like to keep these characters going okay. even past this investigation. If they, if they, I don't like them like Seth Danvers anyway. Tig, Tig uh, Tig's, 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 Tig's fun, but she's full that. of pus now. <laughs> I hope, we can't she, I hope she's with longer you. for this world than what I'm thinking. But she's with the pus people. 